Hey, guys, this is Saruto Uchiha Storm here and welcome to my channel today I am doing what if Naruto was an anti-hero. Chapter 11. Blade of Betrayal. Where is Naruto? Gajil heard as fairy tale members burst through the guild doors, it seemed the plan was working. Yeah where is he, we'll make him pay. Gajil smirked and said, oh, I feel left out here. I should have killed that blue-haired bitch instead. Gur. Urza growled as she charged at him. Gajil jumped back and spoke, he's at the highest tower in the guild, go get him. Makarov heard this and he charged off, he was going to make Naruto pay. Urza was about to run after Makarov as well as a few others when Gajil appeared in front of them, if you want to go with your master, you'll have to go through me. They all charged at him, and so the war had begun. Meanwhile, Naruto was sitting on the floor when he heard huge ass steps and a lot of destruction outside his room. He was passing the time while reading some manga. The blonde continued reading until the doors to the room burst. No broke opened revealing a short man and he looked enraged. You. It was you. Makarov growled as he pointed at Naruto. You hurt. You hurt the one I considered a grandchild. I cannot forgive you. Oh. I always expected the fairy tale master to be more badass but you're just pathetic. Naruto stated as he continued reading his manga. Makarov looked at the blonde. He had heard rumors he and Natsu were both brothers not related by blood but both two kids who were once taught and raised by Igneal. He looked at the blonde's blue eyes and they didn't look soft and warm like Natsu's they looked cold and calm. And he could see evil in them. Makarov extended his arm as he swung at the blonde. His eyes widened when Naruto just disappeared and reappeared in front of him. The blonde was about to kick him when Makarov dodged his kick quickly and he jumped in the air. He did a 360 and was about to kick the blonde's head when Naruto jumped back. Makarov quickly charged after him as he enlarged his fist. The blonde dodged the first three punches but the fourth Makarov landed the punch and Naruto flew across the room and crashed on the wall. The moment he crashed on the wall he yelled, fire dragons roar. Makarov's eyes widened when he saw a beam of black flames headed towards him. The flames felt cold and wretched, but with ease, he dodged the attack and yelled, ice make, dragon. Naruto didn't have time to dodge as a dragon made of ice flew right at him. The ice dragon crashed into him and it shattered. The blonde growled as he disappeared and appeared in front of Makarov again. The man saw this and he too disappeared. The blonde sensed the old man behind him so he quickly turned around as he swung his fist only to receive a punch to the face. The blonde flew backward once again and crashed near a window. Damn, this guy is strong and fast. Naruto thought as he saw Makarov looking at him, rage saw all over his face. Give up. Makarov told him, you, Jose, and everyone, fairy tale will win. Naruto didn't reply he sucked in air and then yelled, fire dragon's dark blast. Naruto blasted at him black fire and Makarov stood still. All he lifted was his right hand. As the fire got closer and closer to him it shrunk and shrunk until at last there was nothing. And Naruto's eyes widened. This guy was really strong. All of your attacks won't work on me. You're still 1000 years too early to defeat me. Makarov stated as he looked at the blonde's face. Naruto growled and charged at Makarov, fire dragon's iron fist. He ran at Makarov and swung at him, but the old man dodged with ease until at last, he enlarged his right hand and then grabbed the blonde's entire body. Naruto felt as the old man's grip tightened around him and he couldn't help but growl. Give up. Makarov yelled at him. HMPH, never. I don't care how strong you are, because Phantom Lord will win. Naruto growled as Makarov's fist tightened even more. The blonde tried escaping the old man's grasp when he got an idea, he ignited his entire body with black flames and now he was covered in flames as well as Makarov's hand. Kuku, you'll lose your hand first or I'll die first. Naruto laughed darkly. Makarov could feel his enlarged hand burning and he growl, it hurt badly but he wouldn't stop. Not until Naruto gave up, but why wouldn't he give up? Naruto realized the old man wouldn't let go so he used re-equip magic and within 10 seconds 10 sharp swords were floating in the air above Naruto and Makarov, Naruto smirked as the blades flew toward the older man. Makarov jumped back quickly and he threw Naruto at the blades that were headed towards him. Makarov's eyes widened when Naruto closed his eyes and without looking in midair he shifted and turned his body to dodge all the blades that now pierced the floor. This kid, no doubt. He could hold his own against Urza. Laxus. Maybe even Mistogen. Makarov thought as he looked at the blonde. He was however snapped out of his thoughts when he felt something behind him. Metsu. Makarov heard as he turned around to see a huge man. Makarov's eyes widened when a light appeared before him and before he knew it he felt his magic draining fast. The old man then felt a ton of pressure on him as crashed on the floor and broke causing him to sink to the lower levels of the guild before crashing on the first floor. 
Eh? Naruto looked confused as he now walked toward Arya the man who had used Mestu and asked, What the hell was that? Metsu. Naruto heard again as he felt light appear around him, and he felt his magic draining away too. The blonde quickly jumped out of the light's way but it was too late because a lot of his magic had been drained away. The blonde felt as if time had frozen, what the hell had just happened? Naruto. Sorry. Arya was crying, I'm sorry. It must be done. Huh? Naruto couldn't think straight. He was beginning to see darkness as a projection of Jose appeared in front of him. My my what a shame Naruto. I like you but this is for the better. It seems you've been keeping secrets from us. My look what Gajil found at your house. Naruto looked and saw that Jose had his gold made of dragon crap. You had this and you didn't bother telling us? We could have used this gold to become even stronger you ungrateful brat. Naruto stayed silent and Jose continued speaking, in the end, none of us trusted you, you'd betray your own before anything, so I decided it was us who would betray you first, you already played your part here, you took down Salamander and the old man, too bad you won't be here to see Phantom Lord rise to the told because Arya is about to put you out of your misery, cuckoo. Naruto stepped back as Arya walked towards him, the blonde growled as he stopped and noticed a window behind him. So this is it, eh? Naruto said as he looked at the floor, surprisingly. I don't feel the blade of betrayal, I guess I never considered you guys friends or anything, just a bunch of hungry powered losers. What did you say brat? Phantom Lord can suck a fat one. Naruto said at last as he flipped off Jose and then, he jumped out the window, breaking the glass window in the process. Naruto. Arya cried as Jose growled, that blonde had a knack for pissing people off. Don't mind him and stop your crying, he's dead anyways, he won't get far if he didn't die from that jump. Jose stated as he looked at Arya, Come back to HQ those fairies are running away now that the old man is defeated, there's no point in staying any longer. Jose's projection disappeared, as Arya nodded and he too just vanished. Chapter 12. Don't fuck with me. Naruto was gasping for air as he walked through the streets, he growled as he saw darkness. That asshole Jose, he should have seen it coming. The blonde walked slowly as he made it through an alley, he dropped down on the and lay beside a dumpster. The blonde knew he could possibly die if he didn't do anything about hit loss of magic. The blonde stayed there on the floor for what seemed like hours. His eyes started closing and at last, he gave into the darkness that awaited him but not before seeing a familiar face. When Naruto woke up, he was in the same spot as before. He blinked when he felt a lot of his magic back. The blonde stood up and dusted himself. What the fuck? How long was he asleep? How did his magic return? Yo, it seems you're awake. Naruto turned his head and saw a silver-haired man with a mask on his face leaning up against the alley wall. Kakashi. Naruto said surprised. What are you doing? Did you do this to me? Kakashi nodded and spoke. I gave you a magic pill that restored your magic. You could have died Yano. Naruto stayed silent and Kakashi continued. I went over to your house, but it seems someone destroyed it. So I followed your scent and here we are. So I guess you didn't come here to visit me. So what do you want? Kakashi in a fake hurt tone said. Ah, Naruto-chan. I'm hurt that you would think that. Good, I hope your heart aches. Kakashi chuckled before he spoke in a serious tone, your parents, they want you back home. Oh? Kakashi nodded and said, when you were barely a baby, your father and a man known as Jude Hartfilia, made a contract. When his daughter Lucy Hartfilia turned 18, she and you would marry, however, Jude is desperate so he decided he wanted you to wed her as soon as possible. So you Naruto Namikaze Uzumaki are the fiancé of Lucy Hartfilia. Ha ha ha. Naruto just laughed at Kakashi. Damn Kakashi, I knew you were funny, but not this funny. Kakashi's eyes narrowed and Naruto spoke. Well see ya later, I have something I need to do. Naruto. Kakashi said his name, are you going to come back home, or am I going to have to fight you? I'll return, Naruto said without looking back, Kakashi could tell the blonde was smirking. I'll inform Kashina and Minato, try to be home by the end of this week. Kakashi spoke before he disappeared. Naruto looked at the sky, before heading to the place where Natsu Dragneel was. Magnolia Hospital. Naruto was in Natsu's room, the pinket looked like utter shit. The blonde smelled the air, it seemed Lucy was here for a long time. Not only that but it seemed Phantom Lord members were also in the same room. They probably got Lucy, the blonde blinked before he told himself, change of plans, I'm going to destroy Phantom Lord, Kukuku. Naruto then walked up to Natsu while he ignited his right hand with his white flames. Natsumi, it seems I played right into fate's hands, eh? Naruto said as he looked at his white flames. You and I are meant to fight until one of us dies? Flashback. Naruto stood before a white fire dragon. The dragon was pretty much dying in front of him. The dragon seemed to be struggling to keep its eyes closed. 
Son of Igneal, you're the one I saw in my dreams, the one with black flames, show them to me. Naruto ignited his entire body, and he was covered with black flames, the white dragon's eyes widened. Such evil I sense from you. These white flames of mines were meant for the other son of Igneal, but I shalt give them to you. However eventually you'll have to give them to your younger brother or these white flames will end up killing you, but for now it will balance you out, but once you give them to your brother, you'll have only those dark flames, and evil will surely consume you. How fast is up to you, cuckoo, fate is a bitch, isn't it? Naruto didn't speak and white flames burst out of the white dragon and they surrounded the blonde. Naruto felt the flames enter his body, and at last, he saw the white dragon smirking until the little life he had in his eyes left his body and the dragon was no longer in this world. Flashback ends. Naruto touched Natsu's head, and his white flames covered the pinkette's entire body. The blonde did this until he no longer felt the white flames inside his body. He looked at Natsu and he looked healed, and at peace. The blonde then walked away, it was time for revenge. Urza Scarlet gasped for air as she fought Jose Porla, Phantom Lord's guild master, he was freaking powerful, and she was tired as hell. She had to do something or she would end up dying. Cuckoo, you look miserable, let me put you out of your misery. Jose smirked before he yelled, dark beam. Out of his fingertips, he shot out darkness beams that headed straight for Urza at a quick speed, she growled and dodged them. However as she dodged she ended up tripping on a rock and she fell to the floor, she quickly got up but it was too late as one powerful beam headed right towards her, she growled and before anything could happen a wooden katana appeared out of nowhere, and whoever owned it, swung and it hit her right in the face, she flew and crashed into a wall, her eyes widened when she saw Naruto, the beam that headed towards her, hit him right in the chest and he flew backward and crashed onto a wall. You, Urza and Jose both looked at the blonde, who was up against the wall, he was looking at the floor and his bangs covered his eyes, and blood was dripping from the corner of his lip. You're supposed to be drained. You're not supposed to be here, you're supposed to be dead. Jose growled when he saw Naruto. Urza on the other hand was sweating like crazy. Naruto was here which meant she had to fight two super strong dudes at once, but why did he do that? She was confused and what was Jose talking about? Naruto smirked as he brought up his face and looked at Jose. The only one who can kill me, is me he said in a cold voice before he disappeared. Jose's eyes widened when Naruto appeared in front of him, fire dragons roar. Naruto yelled as he shot out a beam at Jose, the phantom master flew backward and he crashed into a wall, not through a wall, before he could land on the floor Naruto appeared behind him and yelled, fire dragons punch. He proceeded to punch the man's face, but Jose shifted his body and yelled, darkness beam. Out of the palm of his hand a beam of darkness shot out and it headed towards Naruto, the blonde stood still and right before the beam could hit his face, he moved his head slightly and Jose's eyes widened, as the beam flew past him. Jose looked at Naruto's eyes, and he growled, those eyes, had no fear, no despair, they were just empty and cold. But then he smirked, you can't defeat me, Naruto, Kukuku we both know this. I'm on a totally different level. Jose then smirked as he began glowing blue, and the pressure in the room increased. Naruto didn't seem worried and he spoke, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, a badass fire dragon slayer, don't fuck with me. His black flames burst out of him and he looked at Jose evilly. Both stood still, and at last both charged at each other. Chapter 13. Naruto vs Jose. Both stood still, and at last, they charged at each other. Naruto swung his blazing right fist at Jose who grabbed it with his right hand. The older man then placed his left palm on the blonde's chest and yelled, dark lightning strike. Naruto huffed back air and yelled, fire dragon's blast. As the blonde felt lighting hit his chest and entire body, out of his mouth came out a huge blast of black flames, they hit Jose and he flew backward. The blonde disappeared and reappeared behind Jose, he heel kicked the older man on the side of his face as the man now flew sideways. Fire dragon's roar of destruction. Naruto then yelled as Jose flew backward. Darkness death beam. Jose yelled while lifting his right palm and pointing it at the blonde's attack. Naruto's roar of destruction met with Jose's death beam, and they tried overpowering each other, but Jose won and two combined attacks headed for the blonde at fast speed. Naruto flew backward and he crashed out of the guild and into the water, Jose smirked and he turned and faced Urza. Now where were we? Jose smirked at her, oh, right, I was just about to kill you. Urza growled she felt pain throughout her body, and she couldn't just dodge another attack. The red-haired tried standing up straight but fell on the ground on one knee. Jose was about to fire at her when Naruto out of nowhere flew and tackled Jose. The blonde had a black fire on his feet and he was using the fire as a booster to fly. He held on to Jose as the blonde crashed through the wall of the guild. 
Jose growled as the walls hit his back in the back of his head. Before he could do anything the blonde let go of him and Jose crashed into the water. Yes they were now outside the guild. Fire dragon's bomb. Naruto yelled as a huge bomb of black fire crashed into Jose. A huge explosion was heard as the water went everywhere. Jose then lay on the ground where water once was, and he looked pissed as hell. I can't lose to you, I won't lose to you do die. Jose yelled as he began glowing, his eyes were glowing too. Oi, someone looks pissed, maybe you should retire old man, getting angry is bad for you. Shut up, Jose yelled as magic burst out of him. Naruto flew backward as a wave of darkness magic hit him. Jose then stood up and before Naruto could react, Jose was now in front of him. Jose grabbed his neck and Naruto gasped for air as he tried to free himself. Jose smirked and said, this is the power of a true saint's wizard, now die. Jose squeezed his new tighter and tighter until blood squirted everywhere and the blonde's head fell off of his body and into the water. Cuckoo. You shouldn't have opposed me Naruto, Kukuku, that's what happens when you mess with the strongest. Jose laughed as he dropped Naruto into the water. Oi. Talking about me as if I'm dead is kinda creeping me out. Jose's eyes widened and he turned around only to have a wooden katana pierce his right shoulder, he growled in pain and quickly swung his fist at Naruto, who quickly jumped back to avoid being hit. Why you? I should have known, you used a clone. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, don't forget that, old man. Jose growled and yelled, dead wave, as a powerful wave of ghosts combined into a ball headed right towards Naruto. The attack was fast and before the blonde knew it, the wave was already in front of him, so the blonde brought up his katana and blocked as the wave pushed him back, the blonde held his ground as it kept pushing him back. This is troublesome, if I dodge the fairies behind me will get hit. Naruto thought as he felt the fairies looking at him in panic. I'll just take the hit, but they are paying my hospital bill, muahaha. At last, the dead wave hit the blonde and he flew backward, and crashed into the fairy tail guild, hell, in fact, he destroyed it more. The blonde stood up quickly as he ran out of the guild only to see Jose already at the shore and walking towards him. The old man smirked and yelled, darkness bomb. As a huge ball of darkness magic formed in his right hand, he jumped and then smashed it against the floor, causing a huge wave to hit everyone within sight, the blonde quickly jumped in the air while he saw everyone flying all over the place. Shadow clone make. Naruto then yelled as 20 to 30 clones appeared, and surrounded Jose. Ha 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 fool, a couple of clones can't defeat me. Jose laughed while Naruto smirked. Fairy tale harem make technique. Naruto then yelled and in the blink of an eye his clones transformed into females in bikinis. Not just any females but the females in fairy tale. One of the clones transformed into Urza and spoke in a naughty voice, I've been a naughty girl, please spank me Master Jose, as the Urza clone pressed her boobs against Jose's chest. Master Jose, no spank me. A levy clone spoke as she sexily crawled towards Jose. Master Jose, my breasts are hurting can you message them? A Lucy clone grabbed Jose's right hand and then placed it on her breasts. This caused Jose to fall on the floor while blood left his nose, the power of that technique was out of this world. Naruto dissipated the clones and gulped as he felt glares and evil auras headed right at him. If Jose doesn't kill me, these fairy tale babes are. Naruto thought as Jose stood up quickly. Fire dragons Rasengan. Naruto then yelled as a ball of black fire formed in his right hand. He ran towards Jose who had just finished getting up, and he smashed the Rasengan on the Saint Wizard's chest. Jose coughed up blood as he flew backward and into the water. A huge ball of black fire formed around him and then it exploded. Naruto growled as he then fell on the floor on his knees, he grabbed his heart, it hurt like a bitch, it felt as if his heart was trying to leave his chest. The magic pill Kakashi gave me, its effects are starting, fuck. Naruto thought as he tried getting up but fell, not only were the effects of the pill hitting him now, but he had run out of fire magic. The blonde growled and stood up slowly but surely at last, but then a dark beam flew towards him and hit him on his shoulder, it pierced it and then exited his back. Naruto coughed up blood as he clenched his shoulder, before he could do anything else, Jose appeared before him and punched him in the face, causing the blonde to go flying backward. Cuckoo, seems you're at your limit. Jose smirked as he saw Naruto get up. Oi, you look like shit yourself. Naruto smirked as he noticed Jose gasping for air, and his magic didn't seem as strong now. Don't get a heart attack on me now, old man. Die. Jose just yelled in anger before he yelled, dark blasts. Naruto's eyes widened as five blasts of darkness magic head towards him. The blonde dodged them as quickly as he could but one hit his chest, and he slid backward. He then pulled out his wooden katana and he charged at Jose. The blonde appeared before the older man and he swung, not just once or twice but without stopping. 
Don't stop. Keep striking and swinging. Don't let him find an opening. Naruto told himself as he kept slashing and striking at Jose who couldn't dodge or do anything against the blonde. Naruto at last swung once more with all his might and he hit Jose right in the face. The older man flew back and crashed into the floor. Naruto gasped for air and fell to the floor on his knees after. Was it over? Cuckoo, Naruto, you're strong but not strong enough. After you die, everyone will know the story of how I made you beg to me as I killed you slowly. Naruto's eyes widened and he froze. Jose was a strong motherfucker. The guy kept getting up and the blonde couldn't move, if only he had his white flames, and then he smirked as Jose stood up and walked towards him. The older man pointed his index finger at the blonde's forehead. Any last words, cuckoo? Make me a sandwich, bitch. Naruto smirked before black flames burst out of him. Jose froze as Naruto charged at him, grabbed him by his arm, and then took off flying. He was out of magic, could it be he still had reserves? The blonde flew towards the Phantom Lord Guild and crashed inside, you could see Natsu fighting Gajil, while a beat-up Lucy watched. Naruto grabbed Jose and threw him at Gajil causing both to crash and fly backwards. Fire dragons roar. Fire dragons roar. Both Naruto and Natsu then yelled as white flames came out of Natsu's mouth and black out of Naruto's, both attacks combined and headed right towards both phantom lord mages. K-A-B-O-O-O-O-M. Was then heard as both attacks hit both mages, everything within the proximity of the attack was destroyed. Natsu then turned and faced Naruto, not bothering to check if the attacks were effective against Gajil and Jose, and he charged at Naruto, Naruto grinned and charged back. Chapter 14. Mage days are over. Lucy watched in amazement as Natsu and Naruto charged at each other, both seemed to have run out of magic and now they were fighting with just physical attacks. Whoa, and Naruto is strong. Lucy stuttered as she watched Naruto take one of Natsu's punches like it was nothing. I, Happy agreed before saying, go Natsu. Natsu grinned at Happy, which caused Naruto to land a punch on the Dragon Slayer's face causing him to fly back a bit, but the Pinkette did a back flip and he kicked Naruto's chest, however, Naruto grabbed his leg and swung Natsu as if he was a chair, he then let go and the Pinkette flew and crashed on a wall, the Pinkette eyes widened as Naruto appeared in front of him and swung his fist that was aimed at his face, Natsu quickly moved his face to the side which caused Naruto to punch the wall instead, that's when Natsu swung his left fist and punched Naruto's stomach. The blonde fell to the floor but quickly stood up and jumped back. Natsu stayed where he was and he eyed Naruto. The blonde looked tired, he seemed to be at his limit, and so was Natsu. The one who fell first without getting up would be the loser of this match, and Natsu promised himself, it wouldn't be him, he had to kick Naruto's ass for attacking the guild. Haha, I hardly feel your punches, Natsumi, step up your game. Naruto mocked the pinkette. I would, but look at you, you're at your limit, I don't want to accidentally kill you. Natsu countered back with a glare. Oh, you couldn't kill me even if you tried. Naruto smirked evilly while Natsu growled. It remained silent for a few seconds before Natsu questioned the blonde, Naruto. What is the power to you? What is magic to you? The magic igneal taught you. All you do is bad stuff. Naruto blinked before he laughed and charged at Natsu. Natsu's eyes widened. The blonde was fast, really fast. In a flash Naruto stood in front of him and he grabbed Natsu by his throat. Natsu growled and tried freeing himself, but the blonde's grip was very tight around his neck. Power is a burden, Naruto said at last, which caused Natsu's eyes to widen and growl. The pinkette quickly kicked Naruto's chest with both his feet, causing the blonde to let go. The pinkette did a back flip and then yelled, fire dragons roar. Oi, seems you still have some magic left in you, Naruto said before saying, no fair. That's cheating. No magic allowed. He's acting like a child. Lucy sweat dropped as she stared at the blonde. Naruto stood still as a beam of white flames headed towards him, he was going to eat those flames, muahaha. Idiot, you won't be able to eat those flames anymore, and if you take the entire attack you can possibly die. Naruto's eyes widened when he heard Igneal in his head. The blonde quickly jumped up and dodged the attack but as he jumped Natsu appeared in front of him and did a 360 degree turn before kicking the blonde's face, Naruto flew and crashed on the floor as a crater formed where he landed. Just like your black flames hurt Natsu, his white flames, the ones you game him will hurt you now, Baka. Go back to sleep, you fat lizard. Hey, how dare you call me fat? What are you, a woman? You seem self-conscious about your weight. The great Igneal cares not for weight, so shut it before I eat you. Haha, <laughs> you wouldn't dare. HMPH, brat. Was the last thing Igneal said in Naruto's head before the blonde focused on his fight with Natsu once more. You don't look too good, huh? 
Natsu laughed at Naruto as the blonde stood up. And you look so lovely yourself. Naruto remarked sarcastically. They both stared at each other once more before Natsu charged at Naruto. But while he charged Naruto's eyes widened when he saw Jose stand up and point his index finger at the pinkette's head. And at that moment time seemed to slow down for Naruto. And without realizing he too charged at Natsu while he swung his right fist when they both met up he swung hard and he hit Natsu's left cheek causing the dragon slayer to fly to the side, and before the blonde realized it, he felt as a beam of darkness magic pierced his chest and he felt as it exited his back. Naruto, Natsu, Lucy, and Happy then yelled in shock as they saw Naruto fall to the floor, with huge hole in his chest and back. Cuckoo, you can't survive that Naruto, not even you can beat death. Jose laughed evilly as he saw Naruto lying on the floor, this pissed off Natsu and he charged at Jose, the old man smirked and he lifted up his hand and pointed his index finger at Lucy's head, since we can't have you Lucy, no one else can say die, Kukuku. Natsu's eyes widened when he saw five beams of magic head towards Lucy, he tried running towards her but Jose tripped him and he fell to the floor on his knees. Lucy. Natsu yelled while quickly looking at Lucy, but to his shock, Naruto was in front of her, his wooden katana in front of him, the blonde swung and he sliced four of the beams in half and they exploded, however managed to hit his arm causing his katana to go flying away from him. Jose's eyes widened when he saw the blonde standing up, hole in his chest and all, why you? W what are you? Jose seemed scared as he eyed Naruto. Naruto didn't reply and instead, he coughed up blood as he walked towards where his wooden blade had landed, he grabbed it quickly and used it as a staff for support as he began walking away. Why you can't just walk away like that, you're hurt. Lucy snapped at Naruto as he kept walking away. Cuckoo, he's running away tail in between his leg. Jose laughed evilly at this. Naruto didn't stop walking but he did speak, ha ha ha, this is nothing. I hardly feel a thing, I can still take you on, old man. He said cockily, which caused Jose to growl and point his index finger at Naruto. You fool, still at death's door, and still talking tough, face it you're running away. Jose snapped at the blonde. Naruto smirked before speaking, I just don't want to be here before he shows up. He? Lucy questioned. Jose just growled and once again from his index finger he shot out a beam of magic that headed towards Naruto, the blonde kept walking, he didn't bother to dodge or move out of the way, and in a flash, Makarov appeared behind Naruto and he glared at Jose, he quickly lifted up his palm and stopped Jose's attack. Master, Lucy, Natsu, and Happy all said happily, and then Lucy's eyes widened, so it seemed Naruto was talking about Makarov. Naruto stopped walking and he looked at Natsu, who looked back at him, Natsumi, We'll finish this fight next time, I look forward to it. Naruto said with a smile, which caused Natsu's eyes to widen. Naruto usually smirked evilly, but he seemed to have smiled a real smile. Natsu grinned and spoke, I'm all fired up. Makarov looked at them before he turned to Makarov and yelled, You have done it this time Jose. You hurt my children and I will not go easy on Y.O.U. Jose gulped and the last thing Naruto heard before he disappeared in a yellow flash was, Fairy Law. Scene change. Tsunade Senju was walking around Magnolia, she was a legendary medic mage, known to heal anything and everything, she traveled from town to town, from country to country, from place to, well you get the point right? Anyways, she was walking around Magnolia when she saw blood on the floor, and she looked at it, it seemed fresh, so she followed the trail of blood and it led her to an alley, she kept walking until at last she arrived to a dumpster, it seemed the source of the blood was coming from inside the dumpster, so she opened it and her eyes widened. Naruto. Tsunade yelled in shock as she saw Naruto inside the dumpster, he had his eyes closed, a huge hole in his chest, and on his arm, and he looked badly beaten, hell she couldn't sense magic coming from him, and what the hell? What was he doing inside a dumpster? He didn't seem to be breathing much too, the old hag, air I mean Tsunade quickly grabbed the blonde and took off. Ah, my head hurts, I need some ramen. Naruto groaned as he woke up. Huh, where am I anyways? The blonde looked around and it seemed he was inside a hotel, he looked at his arm and at his chest and both seemed to be bandaged up, seems someone had healed him. You're finally up, Baka. Naruto turned his head and he blinked when he saw Tsunade laying next to him, she was wearing nothing but a black bra. Huh? What the fuck are you doing here? Naruto yelled as he fell off of the bed in shock, wait. I don't remember anything. What the hell? Wait. Why are we in the same bed? Did we do it? No. Please tell me we didn't do it. You're so old. Tsunade's right eyebrow twitched and she got off of the bed and she punched the blonde in the face, causing a huge crater to form around him. You idiot. I found you in a dumpster, passed out, and you seem to be half dead. What the hell is it with you and dumpsters anyways? 
the first time I met you, you were sleeping by a dumpster, and I haven't seen you in a long time and when I do you're half dead in a dumpster. Naruto blinked as he seemed to remember why he got hurt and why he was in a dumpster. Uh, I was sleepy and the streets were filled with noise, so at the time the dumpster seemed nice and cozy. Naruto grinned and Tsunade growled and punched him in the head once more. You idiot, if I hadn't found you, you would have died. I kinda wish you didn't, your punches hurt. Naruto stated which earned him another punch by Tsunade, what the fuck? At this rate I'll die by your hands old hag. Naruto snapped at Tsunade as she stood up, the blonde rubbed his head and he too stood up. Before anything else could be done or said, Tsunade turned around and Naruto flinched because he thought she was going to punch him but instead, she hugged him, the blonde blinked when he felt tears in his chest, he looked at Tsunade's face, she was crying and hugging him like crazy. Why you idiot? You selfish, reckless, crazy, idiot. You need to start thinking about the people who care for you. Tsunade cried at the blonde. Ah, uh, if we lost you, if I lost you, I don't know what I would do. Um, old hag, you're gonna hug me to death or something? Tsunade looked at the blonde's face, and it was purple from the lack of oxygen. She then realized she was hugging him to death with her super strength, and she quickly let go of the blonde, her face red from embarrassment. The blonde took deep breaths before he sat on the bed. S sorry. Tsunade quickly said the blonde shrugged it off, and Tsunade spoke, so, how did you end up like this? A, got in a fight, no longer in Phantom Lord. Naruto replied he was too lazy to tell her the whole story. I see, the guy must have been really powerful. Pretty much. Naruto replied before he ignited his hand with fire. Tsunade watched as he placed his blazing hand over his Phantom Lord mark, and her eyes widened when he started burning the guild mark off of his arm. What do you plan on doing now, brat? Naruto stayed silent before he spoke, my mage days are over, I'm done with magic, guilds, and power, I'm going back home. Tsunade's eyes widened and she leaned closer to the blonde's face, and then she kissed his forehead, good luck then, baka. Naruto grinned at her, as he watched her walk away, and as she did he thought, time to start anew, believe it. Chapter 15. Childhood Friend. Team Natsu minus Lucy were all in Lucy's apartment, and to their surprise, Lucy was nowhere to be found, and they found that odd, maybe she got kidnapped? Yo, flame brain, look what I found on Lucy's bed. Gray told Natsu while handing him an envelope. Huh? A letter? Natsu looked at the envelope. Hmm, let me see that. Urza said or well more like demanded as she took the letter off of Natsu's hand and opened it. Dear, Natsu, Urza, Gray or whoever from Fairy Tale reads this. Thank you, everyone, thank you for being good friends, thank you for seeing me as Lucy and not some rich kid, or as just Heartphilia, but I am going back home, I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if something happened to you guys because of me. Please don't come looking for me, please. I will miss you guys a lot. Please take care and have fun. Love, Lucy from Fairy Tale. L. Lucy quit the guild. Urza's eyes widened as she finished reading the letter. What? Natsu yelled in surprise as he snatched the letter from Urza. Normally if someone disrespected her like that, she'd kick their ass but she was too shocked that Lucy would do such a thing. Fuck, this sucks. Gray said as he clenched his fists. Let's go get her. Natsu growled as he ran out of Lucy's apartment. I. Happy agreed while he followed Natsu, however. Three seconds later they returned back. Haha. <laughs> Where does Lucy's father live? Natsu laughed nervously as he stared at Urza and Gray. HMPH, I'll lead the way, Urza said as she began walking out of the apartment, followed by Gray and Natsu. Scene change. Naruto Uzumaki stood in front of a mansion, well not just a mansion, but the mansion where he used to live, the mansion where he sort of grew up, the mansion where his parents lived. The blonde had been standing at the front door for 10 minutes now, trying to think of a way to greet his parents. Yo, I'm home, what's up? Naruto said to himself, nah, I can't say that. Dad you look older, mom you look as beautiful as ever. Nah too weird, what's rocking? Hello? Uh, fuck this is hard, fuck it, I'll just go with the flow, baby. Naruto told himself, I'll live a space dandy wayy. The blonde dragon slayer was about to ring the bell when the door suddenly opened to reveal a red-haired beauty, said beauty opened up her arms and gave Naruto a bone-crushing hug, yes the red-haired woman was Kashina Uzumaki, Naruto's mother. Naruto, you finally came back, how have you been? Have you been eating your vegetables? Have you been doing good? You look sick, are you alright? You haven't been sleeping around with any woman, right? I know how kids are at your age. Kashina bombed the blonde with a bunch of questions, and Naruto's cheeks turned red from the questions. Missed you too, mom. Naruto just spoke as he hugged his mom back. Come on inside, I'll make ramen. Kashina grinned while Naruto walked inside. Once the blonde was inside he saw his dad, 
a man who looked pretty much like him, with blonde hair, blue eyes, and tan skin. The man's name was Minato Namikaze and he smiled when he saw Naruto. Naruto. Kiddo. Minato grinned as he walked up to Naruto and shuffled his hair, it's about time you came and visited your old man. I actually wouldn't have come if it wasn't because of this wedding shit. Naruto said bluntly. Haha. So cold like usual, even to your own parents, haha. Minato laughed as he continued to rub Naruto's hair. Naruto just grinned and gave his dad a hug, which Minato returned back. After a second both started walking to the kitchen in silence. Kiddo, your room is still exactly how you left it by the way. Minato spoke after a while to break the silence. Oh, thanks, I guess. It remained silent after that, you see to Naruto this was awkward. It had been a long since he visited his parents, he felt kind of like when you're walking with an erection, it's awkward and you don't want anyone to see that you have one. That's pretty much how Naruto felt right now, weird, right? They arrived in the kitchen and Naruto just drooled at the smell of the ramen, his mom made the best ramen ever, it was actually worth it coming back. Both blondes sat down on a counter, and Kashina smiled and hummed as she made the ramen. Naru chan don't you want to take a shower before you eat? Kashina questioned the blonde. Nah, I already got a smell of your wonderful ramen, everything else will have to wait now. Naruto grinned at her, hearing this made Kashina happy. Yo, Naruto then heard a familiar voice behind him. Kakashi, Naruto just said without turning around. Oh, seems you actually did return home, brat. Kakashi spoke in a chill manner, I'm actually surprised, I missed you so much, I couldn't help but come back for a little visit. Naruto said sarcastically. Ah, miss the bedtime stories I used to tell you as a child? Kakashi questioned as he rolled his uncovered eye. Yes, but do you know what I missed the most? Naruto grinned evilly, you being my bitch, muahaha. Before Kakashi could say anything a servant walked into the kitchen and spoke, Minato-sama, there's a call for you on the phone. A call from Jude Hartfilia. Minato who was started to get amused by Kakashi and Naruto sighed and nodded as he stood up and started walking away. Well see ya around, brat. Kakashi then said as he too walked away. Naruto just nodded as he waited for his mother to finish making ramen. Scene change, very wise choice, Lucy. Jude smirked at his daughter as she bowed in front of him. I would have kept hiring guilds to bring you back if you didn't come back. This is for the best after all. Lucy wanted to scream at the man who was her father but she bit her tongue, yes, father. It stayed silent for a few minutes before Jude broke the silence, now that you're here, I'll call Minato, yes. The faster you get married the better. Lucy stayed silent before she asked, W who? Am I getting married to? Jude looked at her and spoke, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. He is a phantom lord mage, actually. What? Lucy's eyes widened at this, and Naruto? H him? It C can't be. Jude looked confused at Lucy and spoke, you may not remember this, but he was actually a childhood friend of yours. He saved your life once, a carriage was taking you guys somewhere, and on a turn by a cliff somehow the carriage got loosened up and both of you headed to your deaths, but that Uzumaki somehow managed to grab you midair and throw you towards the road, witnesses say you hit your head hard that's why you can't really remember. The doctor, however, did say you couldn't remember anything because you took the blame, you blamed yourself for his death and you managed to erase your memories of him and regarding him. Lucy was flabbergasted, she always knew something about Naruto was familiar to her, but she couldn't put her finger on it. Naruto, he, might be dead. Lucy whispered as she looked at the floor. Dead? What do you mean? Jude roared at Lucy as he stood up from his chair and slammed his hands on his desk. He was a phantom lord mage. I don't know what happened, I think he betrayed them, and he fought Jose. The master. Jose messed him up badly, he had injuries that no one could possibly survive. Lucy told her father while she looked at the floor, she was biting her lip, she was hoping that Naruto was alive. Jude's eyes widened and he growled, that Uzumaki. He looked to be deep in thought before he spoke, you're dismissed, go to your room, I'll call for you when you're of use to me. Lucy growled when she heard that, but she nodded and walked away, tears in her brown eyes. Chapter 16. Party isn't a party without explosions. Lucy was in her room, sadly looking around and having flashbacks of when she used to live in her father's home, she was so into this, that she didn't hear explosions within the mansion, and not only that but she didn't hear someone or well a group of people calling her name, until at last the door to her room burst open. Luce, we finally found you, don't just run off like that. Natsu yelled as he rushed towards her and hugged her. And Natsu, Luce's eyes widened. Flame brain, you idiot. Master is gonna die from a heart attack when he gets the bill from all the destruction you caused here. Lucy then heard Grey enter her room. HMPH, you also destroyed as much as, Natsu. 
Urza said in a matter-of-fact tone as she entered behind Grey. You destroyed the most though, Urza. Grey pointed at her. Urza just blushed at this and walked towards Lucy. That was unforgivable of me, Lucy. You may hit me. Lucy didn't know whether to be happy or surprised that they were there. But one thing was for sure, she was happy. She already had missed them and it hadn't been that long since she left. The guild, left her apartment. She didn't even realize it but she was crying which caused the others to look at her surprised. Natsu. What did you do to Lucy? Urza glared at the pinkette, as he stopped hugging her. And nothing. Natsu stuttered, all right Luce? Lucy wiped her tears and smiled, sorry, sorry. I'm just happy to see you guys. Natsu sighed in relief at this, he'd get to live for another day. If you're sad, and you miss us, why leave the guild? Grey just questioned her. Lucy sighed and spoke, you guys already know. My father would just keep hiring mages to come after me, it's for the best. We'd kick their ass then, fairy tale wouldn't lose to anyone. Natsu grinned confidently, just thinking about it gets me all fired up. I, Happy said, you need to come back, you're the only one I can make fun of since you're so weak and ugly. You stupid cat. Lucy glared at Happy. Ah, Natsu, an ugly monster is glaring at me, save me. Save me, Happy said as he hid behind Natsu. Lucy just glared at Happy before she turned to Natsu, Grey, and Urza, I'm getting married. What? They all yelled in shock. Lucy nodded and spoke, that's why my father wanted me back. It'll probably make him richer and more powerful. WHO are you getting married to? Natsu asked her, he seemed pissed, I'll kick his ass. Lucy was about to say it was Naruto before she changed her mind and said, I don't know. You need to come back to the guild, it won't be the same without you. Urza said in a serious tone after a while of silence. The busty blonde shook her head, I won't. Be but, I've made up my mind, I'm sorry. If you're my friend you'll respect my choice. Quote dot 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 quote. It stayed silent, and Lucy felt like crap, how much she wanted to go back to having fun with fairy tale, but it seemed those days were over. If that is what you wish for, then I will not question your choice then, I'm sorry. Urza said after a while. Natsu and Grey nodded, they wanted to keep pressuring her to join back but they knew Urza would probably kill them. However, Urza continued, since you are getting married and such, we will attend your wedding. We are? Natsu and Grey both yelled in shock. Urza just nodded as she crossed her arms, once she made up her mind, nothing could stop her, muahahaha. Scene change, it was already evening when Naruto was eating dinner with his parents, and Kakashi. It was surprisingly a pleasant dinner for all of them, Minato and Kashina were both happy that Naruto was there with them. Kakashi on the other hand was annoyed by the blonde, and he couldn't help but sigh. As dinner was coming to an end Minato spoke, I have some news regarding the wedding. It stayed silent and he continued, tomorrow we are having a rehearsal dinner at Jude's place. He's going to invite every person with money, power, and or fame to this rehearsal dinner. The day after the rehearsal dinner, you and Lucy are going to wed Naruto. By the way, why did Jude think you were dead? Naruto froze at hearing the last part and he spoke, I have no idea, dude is crazy. Back to the topic though. Aren't rehearsal dinners just for close family and friends and not the entire world? Haha, <laughs> yes, but I guess Jude wants to show off that Heartphilia and Namikaze are uniting. Minato told the blonde. I'm going to be inviting some friends. Invite anyone you want. Kashina smiled at her son. Naruto just grinned and Kakashi couldn't help but feel worried. Scene change. Rehearsal dinner. It was nighttime when Naruto and his family arrived at Jude's place. The rehearsal dinner would start in an hour, and people were starting to arrive as well. The blonde noticed there were mages from several familiar guilds stationed all over the huge ass dinner room. The blonde figured they were there to protect the guest in case something happened. As the blonde walked closer to a big and long table he smelled good food, and he was itching to eat some. Hey, Naruto, what the fuck? What are you doing here? Naruto then heard a familiar voice as he and his parents turned around. Naruto, are these your friends? Kashina smiled at Natsu, Grey, and Urza. Hi, I'm Kashina Uzumaki, and I'm Naruto's mother. Oh like hell we're friends. Natsu yelled as he pointed at Naruto. This bastard almost killed me once. Almost. Naruto said as he eyed Team Natsu, they were dressed up, Natsu and Grey both had tuxes, while Urza had a dashing blue dress, and damn did she look good. Natsu, be nice. Urza just glared at the pinkette before turning and smiling at Kashina and Minato. I'm Urza Scarlet. Grey Fullbuster. Natsu. Dragneel. They all introduced themselves and Natsu asked again, Naruto, what are you doing here? Oh, where is that bastard? It seemed the blonde was no longer with them, and they looked around and they didn't seem to find him. Oh, didn't you guys know? My Naruto is getting married to Lucy Hartfilia. Kashina told them. Say W-H-A-A-A-T? 
Natsu said in shock, he's the one marrying Lucy? Minato nodded, it appears so. That's shocking, it's a forced marriage right? Gray questioned Kashina. Well, kinda. Kashina told them. What do you mean kinda? Urza's eyes narrowed. We love Naruto, he's our only soon, and we want him to be happy, he doesn't have to get married to Lucy if he doesn't want to, but he hasn't said anything against it otherwise. Minato spoke. Why are they getting married in the first place? Gray asked them. When Naruto and Lucy were young it kind of happened, we were hoping for them to be childhood friends, which they were. But things happened. We were hoping they'd naturally just fall in love, but things just happened. Lucy forgot about Naruto due to some trauma, and Naruto went missing for years. Kashina replied to Grey as they walked towards the table. That's interesting, Urza said while looking at Kashina and Minato, they seemed like nice people. How strong is Naruto though? She thought as she narrowed her eyes. He's crazy and reckless when it comes to fighting. He was able to hold his own against Jose very well. Could I even defeat him? You guys appear to be mages, what guild? Minato grinned as he asked them. Fairy tale. Natsu grinned, the best guild ever. Kashina, you hear that? Minato turned to his wife, from fairy tale. It sure brings back memories. We were from fairy tale too. Kashina said excitedly, that's where Minato and I met. Ah, it sure brings back memories. What? You guys were from fairy tale? Natsu and Grey asked. They both nodded. We soon left after Naruto was born. We would have wanted him to join. But he joined Phantom Lord instead. How did such cool parents end up having that thing? Grey then asked as he pointed at Naruto, it seemed he was with Lucy. Naruto. Natsu yelled as he and Happy ran toward Naruto and Lucy. Kashina giggled and spoke, that thing is our awesome son, he may not be the nicest person ever, but he has a heart of gold. Urza and Grey stayed silent and Minato spoke, we aren't supposed to eat now but all this talk has got me hungry, so hell with it, and let's eat. They all nodded and started grabbing food from the table. Naruto was looking at Lucy, she seemed sad, her brown eyes just seemed lifeless, but the blonde just shrugged it off. Oi, Lucky, seems we're getting married, eh? He asked her. HMPH, I don't want to get married, I don't love you, I'm just doing this to protect fairy tale. Lucy just snapped at the blonde, we seem to be in the same situation, and you don't seem to be sad or anything. Naruto looked at her boobs and spoke, I don't mind getting married, blonde and busty makes me lusty. Lucy's face turned red and she covered her breasts by crossing her arms, my face is up here, asshole. Before Naruto could say anything, Natsu and Happy appeared in front of him, the pinkette growled at the blonde and grabbed him by his tux. Get away from her, asshole. Natsu snapped at the blonde. Oi, is that how you're gonna treat someone who saved your life? Naruto said as he cocked his right eyebrow. I didn't ask to be saved, neither did Lucy. Natsu said as his face got closer to the blonde. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders and spoke, Lucy and I are getting married, so you're gonna have to deal with it. In the blink of an eye, the blonde was now beside Lucy, his right arm wrapped around Lucy's waist, this caused Natsu to get pissed. Get your filthy arms off of Lucy's waist. Natsu demanded. Oh, Natsumi, look at ya, you seem jealous, Naruto smirked as he then turned Lucy and they were face to face, the blonde then got closer to her and kissed her lips, it was a simple kiss, that seemed to have pissed off both Lucy and Natsu. Don't tell me you like, Lucky? Naruto smirked as he eyed Natsu. I, he likes hair. Happy nodded and Naruto laughed. You like her, don't ya? Happy and Naruto both said at the same time, Natsu likes Lucy, Natsu likes Lucy. Both Happy and Naruto then sang which caused Natsu to turn red. And no I don't like Luce in that type of way, and since when did both of you become friends? Natsu pointed at Happy and Naruto. They just ignored the pinkette as both Happy and Naruto continued singing, Natsu and Lucy, sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G first comes love, then comes marriage, then a fire-breathing baby, in a carriage. Lucy and Natsu were just red and filled with embarrassment. Before anything else could be done or said there was an explosion within the mansion, and everyone froze as a man with a huge blade entered the room. So the party started without me, eh? The man spoke as he walked inside and towards the table with food, he grabbed a bottle of wine and began drinking. When he was done he grinned and continued, when I heard that bastard Naruto was getting married, I just had to come, kukuku, and I come for revenge. So Naruto you bitch, show yours. The man didn't finish talking as Naruto appeared in front of him and punched him in the face, the man flew backward and crashed on a chair, he quickly got up and grinned as he looked at Naruto. Oi, Zabuza, where's Haku? Naruto casually asked him. Zabuza remained silent before he spoke, none of your business, so die. Zabuza charged at the blonde and swung his blade, Naruto quickly pulled out his wooden blade and he blocked the man's attack, 
Zabuza used his left hand to punch the blonde's face, this caused Naruto to fly backward, but as he flew backward, he did a back flip and landed standing up. You're not supposed to be here, leave or pay the price. Mages that Jude had hired then said as they appeared and surrounded Zabuza. Zabuza ignored them and charged at Naruto, and the blonde charged at him as well. As they got closer and closer to each other the mages surrounded both, both Zabuza and Naruto swung at each other's face, but right before they could land their shots on each other's face, both quickly shifted their bodies and punched one of the mages in their faces instead. W what's going on? Naruto and Zabuza just smirked evilly as they charged at the mages surrounding them, both just using physical attacks instead of magic. Kaboom! Was then heard as explosions were heard throughout Jude's mansion. Oi, don't tell me you planted bombs all over the place? Zabuza smirked evilly and spoke, it isn't a party if there aren't any fireworks. Well, how about we make the biggest fireworks anyone could possibly make? Zabuza grinned as he yelled, water dragons roar. Fire dragons roar. Naruto then yelled as both aimed their beams of magic at the ceiling, both attacks combined causing a huge explosion. What the hell is going on here, you, I'll sue your entire family. Jude then yelled as he pointed at Naruto, what is the meaning of this? Kaboom was then heard as explosions were heard throughout Jude's mansion. Oi, don't tell me you planted bombs all over the place? Zabuza smirked evilly and spoke, it isn't a party if there aren't any fireworks. Well, how about we make the biggest fireworks anyone could possibly make? Zabuza grinned as he yelled, water dragons roar. Fire dragons roar. Naruto then yelled as both aimed their beams of magic at the ceiling, both attacks combined causing a huge explosion. What the hell is going on here, you, I'll sue your entire family. Jude then yelled as he pointed at Naruto, what is the meaning of this? Naruto blinked and spoke, change of plans, I don't plan on getting married, so suck it. Jude growled and charged at the blonde, bad idea because Naruto punched him in the face causing him to fly backward. Naruto noticed Lucy behind him and she seemed surprised the blonde turned around and grinned at her, you stupid girl, your guild risks their lives to stop you from being taken away, and you decide to just return after the destruction of fairy? You could have just gone willingly, in the first place, women eh? Only you have the power to fuck up your life any way you want to, idiot. Lucy's eyes widened, and she couldn't help but cry. Was he doing this for her sake? I I don't remember anything, I have tried. It seems we were childhood friends, but nothing. I remember nothing. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and said, Eh, hey, doesn't matter, you're still the same girl I grew up with, and if it makes you feel better you did have a crush on me, that doesn't make me feel better. Lucy blushed while Naruto walked towards Jude and picked him up, the blonde then walked towards Lucy and handed him over to her. You should get out of here, this entire place is about to collapse. W what about you? Lucy asked him as she noticed him and Zabuza walking towards the table, both grabbing random foods and bottles of wine. Oh, we're getting some food then getting the fuck out of here, I don't want to be here when your dad and knights show up. Naruto replied before he bit a piece of chicken leg. Lucy nodded and walked out of her mansion, as Naruto and Zabuza fought over food. Hey, I wanted that bottle brat. Well first come first serve. Screw you, I'll kill you. Try it, girl. Lucy smiled as she walked out of her mansion. Minato and Kashina were sweat dropping like crazy as they saw Lucy and Jude come out of the mansion, they were the last ones out it seemed, the mansion was all destroyed and crumbled up. S shit, L look what Naruto did. Minato gulped. T that B brat, I should have known. Kashina gulped as well. Ha ha ha, babe, you probably won't agree with me but we should get out of here. Minato laughed nervously. Kashina wrapped her arms around Minato and spoke, I actually do agree, let's get out of here before Jude wakes up. Minato grinned as both disappeared in a yellow flash. Kakashi noticed this and sighed as he thought, he had this planned all along, I should have known. But then it's hard to predict his thoughts and moves, he truly is fearsome. The gray hair then disappeared as well. Luce, are you okay? Natsu said worriedly as he ran towards Lucy. Lucy smiled that smile that he loved, yes. Let's go back home. Natsu's eyes widened and he grinned. Let's go. Team Natsu all smiled as they all walked home happily. Chapter 17. Bartenders from Hell. It had been a few days since Naruto crashed Jude's wedding plan. The blonde and Zabuza had split up and gone their own separate ways since then. Naruto was currently working toward his dream to become the Pirate King. Just kidding the blonde was actually chilling at his new place. The blonde used to live in Oaktown and since his house got destroyed he then decided he would live in Magnolia instead, they had better stores, hotter ladies, and awesome ice cream. Anyways, Naruto now lived next to a bakery called Magnolia's Bakery, the owner of Magnolia's Bakery owned a one-floor building that was empty and next to the bakery, 
the owner of the bakery decided to rent out the building to the blonde for 2,000 jewels a month, it was a rip-off right? Well, the blonde didn't plan on paying rent anyways, and so now the blonde lived there. Odd jobs Naruto, bitches. The building in which Naruto lived had that sign on it in front, in big black and bold letters, yes. Since he was no longer a mage from illegal guild, the blue-eyed dragon slayer decided to start his own odd jobs, do jobs nobody wanted to do at a freaking cheap price. Inside the one-story building, there were two couches facing parallel to each other, both couches were cheap looking, they also were good for two people to sit on each couch, and in the middle of the two parallel couches was a small wooden table, on one of the corners of the room there was a small crappy TV, and on another corner, there was a stand which had a bunch of manga and anime videos. On the left wall, there was a door that lead to the small-sized bedroom, there was just really a queen-sized bed, a closet, and a door that lead to the bathroom. It wasn't the fanciest place, but it was better than living under a bridge, right? Anyways, back to Naruto. The blonde was currently laying down on the couch, flipping the pages to a manga with a bored expression on his face, his chilling time was disrupted when he heard a knock on the door. Hey anyone here? Naruto heard a man's voice. No, nobody's home, come back in 1000 years, sayonara. Naruto didn't want to deal with anyone at the moment. It remained silent which made Naruto believe the man had left, but he was wrong, the door to the building opened, and Naruto wanted to punch himself for forgetting to leave the door unlocked. Haha, <laughs> it was unlocked so I decided to come in. The man stated. Naruto kept flipping through his manga before he spoke, huh? I didn't see you there. Who the fuck are you, oi? The man's sweat dropped before he cleared his throat, I'll get straight to the point. My wife is giving birth today, oi, oi, don't tell me your life story, just get to the point. The man nodded quickly, I am the owner of a bar, and I'm going to be busy today, so I need someone to fill in for me as one of the bartenders, since the bar I own the bartenders are always being mugged, and jumped, all my bartenders have quit, I hired one earlier just for today, but it gets full so I would feel better if there was another bartender. Uh, fuck that. Naruto snapped at the old man, I'm too young and handsome to get mugged or jumped, are you trying to kill me? And no, no, I, I really just need for you to fill in for today, I all pay you 30 jewels an hour, oi. Did your mom drop you as a baby? No, you must have been bottle fed. Only a dumb ass risks their life for 30 jewels an hour. Naruto wasn't worried about getting jumped or mugged, he could take on a few thugs before a mother could flip a Sunday morning pancake, the blonde just didn't feel like working, today. I I'm broke, you're my only hope. Legal guilds are more expensive. Bullshit. You're a bartender, you must get good tips, you're just a cheap bastard. The man stayed silent and Naruto without looking at him spoke, go hire some bum off of the streets, no way in hell am I doing this job. The man sighed and began walking away. Right there and there a miracle happened, yes a miracle. Naruto had a change of heart. W wait, I'll do it, old man. Naruto yelled quickly as he stood up, but then fell to the floor, he was hungrier than a pack of wolves who hadn't eaten in a damn week. It was either a miracle or the blonde was just hungry, because well bars have drinks, food, and babes, right? Of course, now let's go before I have a change of stomach, air I mean heart. The man smiled and the blonde walked out of the building, right behind the man. They walked for a few blocks before they arrived at a bar that had a sign that said, Greatest Bar in Magnolia. That's a shitty bar name. Naruto said as he looked at the sign. Every good name was taken. As if. You were just too lazy to come up with something creative, you boob sucker. No, the author of this story was too lazy to come up with one. Oi, don't go on breaking the fourth wall. Breaking the fourth wall is like taking a girl's virginity. I regret hiring you. The man just muttered, the blonde was starting to annoy him with his remarks. Naruto just ignored him and continued speaking. Yes, it's a sacred and forbidden thing, that must be handled with care. Once you take a babe's virginity things just aren't the same, same with the fourth wall. They walked inside the bar after that and Naruto noticed it was halfway full. There were huge flat screen TVs, pool tables, and other types of weird games. The man walked behind the counter where the bartender was supposed to give drinks, and Naruto followed him, only to stop when he saw Zabuza. Why you? Zabuza yelled in surprise as he stared at Naruto. Be in awe at the sight of Lord Naruto Uzumaki, bitch. To hell with that, what are you doing here? Oi, you seemed surprised, couldn't you sense me? I sensed you block away, are you really a dragon slayer? You're probably one of those con artists that bullshit, fuck that. Zabuza growled, I'm just slightly intoxicated, now answer my question brat. I'm here to become the greatest bartender in the world, believe it. Don't give me that crap, now fess up. Last time I checked I was at a bar, not a fucking confession booth. Naruto said calmly as he started walking toward the man who hired him. 
Once he got to where the man was the man handed Naruto a book, here, it's a book on how to mix drinks, and make drinks, most people here order sake, or vodka or some shit like that, but from time to time someone does ask for a different kind of drink, and if they do just follow the instruction on this book. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Naruto shrugged his shoulders as he threw the book across the bar. W why did you throw it? Mixing drinks is easy, like making cereal, anyone can do it, haha, <laughs> idiot. Mixing a drink or making a drink is not like making cereal. Zabuza laughed as he overheard Naruto talking. Only simple-minded fools think that in reality mixing a drink is like making cereal, you pour the milk in the bowl, then some Lucy charms, and boom, you got some magical shit going up in your bowl. Zabuza snorted, you're just a half-assed piece of shit, making alcoholic drinks, is an art. Art is a bang, was heard across the bar. Art is gonna be my fist in your face if you don't shut up Didera. Was then heard, before a bar fight broke out. I'm starting to regret this, I don't think I should leave both of you guys in charge. Naruto decided to take matters into his own hands and pushed the man towards the exit of the bar. W what are you doing? Don't worry, we got this, you go home to your husband, okay? I'm not gay, and I'm married, my wife is giving birth today, asshole. Oi, don't get defensive, I won't judge you, I'm not gay, are you deaf? That's what Justin Bieber said, and I'm pretty sure he digs men. W what are you talking about? Never mind, it's no use talking to you, I'll be back tomorrow morning. The man walked away, and Naruto walked towards the counter where drinks were served, he sat across from Zabuza who was wondering what the hell the blonde was doing. Don't just stand there, serve me a drink. W what? Screw you brat, serve yourself. Is that a way to treat a customer? You're no customer, you're a brat who should be stoned to death. I want ice on my drink too. Naruto ignored Zabuza's shouting. Zabuza growled before he grinned evilly. Do you want poison with your drink? Naruto blinked, nah. I'm allergic to poison, it'll kill me. T this brat is pissing me off. I all kill him, yes. I all kill him, hide his body in the woods, then join another dark guild, Cuckoo. Zabuza seemed to have snapped as he poured the blonde some sake. Naruto took the cup of sake and gulped it all down in one drink. As he put the cup down a man sat down next to the blonde, he looked to be in distress. I want a bottle of sake, no make it two bottles of sake. The man said as he gave Zabuza the money. Naruto eyed the man before he spoke, what crawled up your ass, I I, cheated on my wife, and we have three kids, I I can't live with the guilt, it just happened, I want to tell her but I don't want to lose her and my kids. Zabuza placed two bottles of sake in front of the man. Naruto grabbed one of the bottles casually and took a huge drink before he spoke, what is done is done, you might as well keep cheating. Idiot, what kind of shitty advice is that? Zabuza snapped at Naruto as he grabbed the other bottle of sake that the man had just gotten and he gulped it all down. Hell is a place for sinners like you, you have a special spot reserved just for you in the VIP section. Zabuza stated with an evil grin as the man's eyes widened. And no, I don't want to go to hell. I, I feel so bad. Then in times like this, all a man can do is drink his sorrows away. Naruto took another drink from the bottle of sake. I would, but you two fuckers drank all my sake. You should be thanking us. What if these bottles have poison inside? We just saved your life. Naruto yelled at the man. I feel like crap, and you two aren't helping. That's because you are crap. Zabuza told the man. Don't be cold Zabuza, he's a beautiful piece of crap who one day will bloom. Naruto stated as he nodded his head. What kind of bartenders are you guys? Other bartenders are nicer, and they try to make me feel better. They actually help me run and get away from my troubles, both of you are worthless. Cuckoo. We're the bartender from hell, bitch. Naruto and Zabuza both laughed evilly, as the man's eyes widened. I just want to crawl inside a hole and die now, the man sighed. Oi, you're a scumbag, and that won't change, but maybe just maybe, you can be an honest scumbag, and tell the truth to your wife. Naruto told the man, hell, she will probably find it hot, and she will want to do a threesome. Why you really think she'll want a threesome? Naruto nodded. Babes nowadays get turned on by the sight of cheating men, it gets them excited, she'll be glad you cheated on her, trust me. The man stood up with determination he said, I will tell her, thank you. Naruto and Zabuza watched as he ran away happy expression on his face and he even cheered, fuck yeah, I'm getting me a threesome tonight. Poor clueless bastard, he's actually getting a divorce tonight, ha 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 ha. Zabuza laughed as he took another drink from the bottle, you're an evil asshole, brat. Naruto shrugged his shoulders as a busty woman walked and sat next to Naruto. I'd like a bottle of sake, thank you. The woman smiled at Zabuza. Oi, look at those boobs. Naruto said as he poked the woman's right boob, they are massive. 
The woman nodded, they make my back ache, but I need them for my profession. Zabuza handed her, her bottle and asked, what's your profession? Oh, I'm an actress. She smiled. Ah, nice, what kind of movies have you played in? Haha, <laughs> well, I make adult movies. She took a small sip of sake. Naruto grabbed her bottle and took a drink too. Oh, you make adult movies, that's nice, wait. Adult M movies? The blonde was coughing because of the drink now. The woman nodded as she snatched the bottle away from the blonde, and drank some more. Naruto and Zabuza froze at this, and they took a few steps away from her. Zabu Chan. Is she a porn star? Naruto whispered in Zabuza's ear. I need to know her porn star's name. Zabuza said as he took his phone out, ask her for her porn star name. Like hell, I will. I I see can't just ask that. But I want to know. How do you think I'm feeling? You ask her. Why should I? Why you're the bartender. So are you. You have more experience. That's a shitty reason. Okay. At the count of three, we both ask. Zabuza nodded, and Naruto counted. One, point two, point three, both turned and asked or more like yelled, what's your porn star name? They both ended up blinking when they noticed the woman was no longer there, but instead a dude, a dude with lipstick, and he happened to be gay. Oh, honey. The man spoke, my, fuck out of here. Naruto punched him in the face and he flew away, I'm into women. After that both Naruto and Zabuza just remained silent, nobody really entering the bar, and it was starting to get dark, and well once it got dark, people started coming into the bar like crazy, and both Naruto's and Zabuza's hands seemed to be full, well mostly Zabuza's, the blonde wasn't doing anything pretty much. The bar then all of a sudden got silent, when a sexy brunette walked into the bar. T that Kana from Fairy Tail. S she's super hot, how I'd love to tap that ass. I hear no one has ever beat her in a drinking contest. Su so cool. Kana walked over to the counter, a few seats away from Naruto, and spoke, I want some vodka. Zabuza nodded and handed her a small cup of vodka, she grabbed it quickly and gulped it all down, more. Zabuza poured her more and this time she took a small sip before looking at Naruto. You look cuter up closer, blondie. Kana told the blonde, super cute, too bad you're an asshole. Naruto blinked and said, you look like a slut up close. What did you say? You heard me. Kana laughed before she spoke, you're such an ass, you probably have a small dick, eh? You push everyone away because you're probably insecure about yourself and your size, haha. <laughs> Care to measure it with your mouth? I'd rather die. It remained silent after that. Kana had not forgotten about what he did to Natsu and how he attacked Fairy Tail. She did hear he saved Natsu, Lucy, and Urza, but that wasn't enough to redeem a man in her eyes. Oi, I heard you never lost a drinking contest, how about we have one? Naruto said after some silence. Haha, <laughs> you'll lose, save yourself the trouble. HMPH, the loser has to do anything for the winner. Kana cocked her right eyebrow, so if you lose, I can ask you to do anything, anything for me? Naruto nodded and Kana grinned. Well, you're about to become my slave. Yeah, yeah, first to pass out, loses. Kana nodded and Zabuza handed Naruto a small cup and he poured both of them vodka, and so their drinking contest began. Hey, the famous Naruto Uzumaki is having a drinking contest with Kana. Oh, I gotta see this. Me too. I bet all my money Kana will win. Me too. So do I. Placing their bets, everyone watched as Naruto and Kana were drinking fast, strong, and hard. Three bottles of vodka had been consumed and Kana looked like she hadn't drunk at all. The blonde however looked like he was about to pass out. Haha. <laughs> One more drink and you'll pass out. Kana smirked as Zabuza poured Naruto once more. Who the fuck are you? Naruto slurred as he glared at Kana, he was really drunk. Kana just smirked as Naruto gulped down vodka and then fell to the floor on his face. See Kana won. Yay. I'm rich. Naruto get up, brat. I bet all my money on Y.O.U. Zabuza yelled at Naruto. Kana just smirked but then her eyes widened when she saw Naruto get up. Huh? Enough of this shit. Naruto said intoxicated. A -E -W 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 drink KKS don't phase me. Damn Kana your saha wt. Ah I gotta pee. Naruto tried unzipping his pants but couldn't, so he did what any man would do, he snatched the bottle of vodka that Zabuza had in his hand and gulped it all down, causing everyone's eyes to widen. Time to bring this shit up to thaw next level. Kana growled and snapped, bring me a bottle too. Zabuza nodded and took out 10 bottles of vodka, Kana grabbed one and started gulping it all down, Naruto finished his and grabbed another, it was now a battle of bottles, who would drink the most bottles before passing out. Many bottles later. Kana was feeling hot, and well aroused, not only that but for the first time in a long time she felt excited, it seemed Naruto was pushing her to her drinking limit. Damn, how hot he looked drinking from the bottle. 
Kena however smirked when she saw that Naruto was struggling to drink. Z Zabu Chan. I don't think. I'm gonna make it. Brat. Don't give up now. I, I see the light. Oh it's so bright. No. Naruto ooh. Ah shut up before I Kamehameha your ass. Gur. I dare you punk. Naruto did an odd position and he put his palms together before yelling. Kamehameha. Quote dot dot quote. Silence. S shit. My attack didn't work. It's not working. I'll try again. Idiot. It won't work because you're not Goku. Oh, right. I'm Luffy and I'm gonna be the Pirate King. Just drink. Zabuza snapped as he shoved a bottle into the blonde's mouth. The blonde started drinking again until he started seeing darkness. Kana too was starting to black out. She was biting her lips to stay awake. She noticed Naruto walk up to her and he did something that surprised her. He kissed her lips and she felt his hot tongue enter her mouth and she couldn't help but like it. She started sucking on it and before it could continue Naruto pulled free. Why you win? Naruto spoke as he fell to the floor, he had passed out. Kana grinned before she too passed out seconds later. Zabuza laughed evilly as he took out a marker and said, Kukuku, time for revenge, as he walked towards Naruto. Scene change. When Naruto woke up he didn't know where he was at, other than that he was in bed. With Kana. You're finally awake. Kana grinned as she looked at him. Ag, my head. What happened last night? Hmm. You fucked me after you woke up from your pass out. Naruto blinked and Kana smirked. I bet you can't make me orgasm again. Naruto blinked once more before he spoke. See, I have a principle I live by. Once I sleep with a woman, I don't sleep with her again. Kana uncovered herself, and Naruto's eyes widened as he saw her in all her glory. Fuck it. These principles can go to hell. Kana smirked. If you can't make me orgasm, you have to buy me breakfast. Deal. And so Kana's and Naruto's rivalry began. Zabuza. When he woke up, he woke up outside of the bar, two babes on top of him, he quickly got up and his eyes widened when he saw the bar. Well, what was left of it anyways, because it was all burned down. Zabuza then looked at the ground and written in paint was, bartenders from hell, bitches, poor bastard whoever owned this bar. Zabuza spoke as he looked at the burned down bar. I should probably get the fuck out of here. Zabuza said but then he shrugged his shoulders and went back to sleep with the two hot babes he woke up with. Life sure is interesting with that Uzumaki was his last thought as he drifted to sleep. Chapter 18 Arena of Death Oi. What do you want, Metal Face? Naruto questioned Gajil as they both along with Kena sat inside an ice cream place somewhere in Magnolia. Uh. What are you doing with Kena? Gajil eyed the blonde, you smell like alcohol, sex, and fairies. You just answered your own question. Kena grinned at Gajil while she winked at Naruto. It had been a few days since Kena and Naruto had met and ever since, they were meeting up to have sex whenever they could, however they could, and wherever they could. Gajil looked at her and Naruto and his eyebrow rose, well this is unexpected. I know right? Kana said as she licked ice cream from her ice cream cone. After we were done having some fun, Naru-chan and I decided to get ice cream. But you coming along wasn't part of the plan, metal freak. Naruto pointed at Gajil. Gajil's sweat dropped and yelled, WHO are you calling M-E-T-A-L-F-R-E-A-K? Why you blonde? Your blonde hair is probably dyed. WHO has blonde hair your color? I think it's sexy. Kana commented while both dragon slayers ignored her. You wanted to talk to me about my blonde hair? Naruto's right eyebrow rose as he finished eating his ice cream. And no. Gajil growled, so shut up and let me talk. Gajil expected a remark but sighed in relief when he got none so he started speaking. Old man Makarov wants you to join Fairy Tale. Kana's eyes widened and Naruto said, fuck that. Gajil just continued. Juvia and I have decided to join. Juvia wants you to join as well. She doesn't want you to be alone anymore. Ha 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 ha. Naruto just laughed causing Kena and Gajil to look at him oddly. Now that's unexpected. Ha. Gajil Red Fox, scary and ruthless motherfucker joining some fairies? Who could honestly expect that? Hell, I could expect pigs to fly before you could ever join them. Ah. Don't tell me those fairies got big bad Gajil to turn into a softie? Gajil growled and stood up to grab Naruto by his shirt. Why I wanted to join is my concern. So shut up. He snapped as they stood face to face now. Naruto re-equipped a small dagger into his right hand and then he pointed it at Gajil's neck. Oi. I suggest you let go of me unless you want another piercing? Naruto smirked. Gajil growled. He knew Naruto wasn't one to bluff unless he was toying with you. He was a rotten and shitty man after all. So he let go of the blonde and stayed standing up. HMPH. I rather not have your annoying ass join. You're more suited to join a dark guild anyways, right? Gajil spoke as he turned around. Juvia says she misses you. She wanted to come but was feeling shy. She thinks you've gone over to the dark side. 
saying she feels evilness radiating from you. Ha! Huh. Have you looked at yourself in the mirror? You're the evil looking one here. Gur, punk. Either way, I'm no longer a mage. Mages are overrated. I'm going to be a pirate. Naruto spoke as Gajil's eyes widened. HMPH, whatever. Gajil shrugged his shoulders as he walked away. Unknown to Naruto, the black haired man was pissed. Kana stayed silent as she eyed the blonde. Naruto looked at her before he began walking away. Hey, Naruto, why don't you want to join Fairy Tail? Kana was curious. Naruto stopped walking and spoke, fairies are lame. Kana sweat dropped and said, well see ya around, don't forget to come visit me, especially when you want to have some fun. Naruto's cheeks turned slightly red and he knew Kana had winked at him, the blonde just nodded and began walking away. He's one interesting guy alright, who are you Naruto Uzumaki? Kana thought as she watched the blonde walk away. As the blonde walked towards his new home he couldn't help but feel eyes staring at him, the blonde pretended not to notice it, and as he continued walking he suddenly saw darkness as someone wrapped a bag over his head, before the blonde could do anything he felt a needle enter the skin on his arm, and before he knew he saw pitch darkness, they had drugged him. When Naruto woke up, he had no idea where he was other than that he was in a room, and he could hear cheers somewhere behind him. The blonde felt sleepy and well drugged. You finally woke up, a blonde haired girl said at last. Haha, I was beginning to think we accidentally killed you, a man with face paint said as he eyed Naruto. The blonde blinked before speaking, did I sign up for some role play kind of shit while I was drunk? You know, the whole kidnap me and torture me sexually kind of role play? Oi, I don't mind that but I'm into chicks so dude with the face paint, you're gonna have to leave. You idiot, the blonde haired chick snapped at Naruto, we kidnapped you, this isn't no role play, so keep your sick fantasies to yourself. Tamari, this guy is such a weirdo. The man in the face paint whispered to the blonde, HMPH doesn't matter. We just need him for this task. Right, right. Naruto stayed silent and the blonde chick spoke. You may be wondering why we kidnapped you. I actually don't care. Then ACT like you care, idiot. Tamari sweat dropped before she continued. We want you to do something for us. No way in hell. Naruto said casually as he stood up and walked towards a door in front of him. I'm going home. As the blonde headed towards the door, he heard a beep. And it was coming from his neck. He looked down and saw a collar on his neck. And it had a flashing red light. He turned around and looked at Tamari who was smirking as she was holding some sort of remote control, she was holding down on a red button. The collar on your neck explodes if I hold this red button for more than 10 seconds, do you value your head? Tamari smirked, she had Naruto right where she wanted. Naruto without showing emotion walked back to the chair he was in, I'm listening. Good. Tamari sighed in relief as she let go of the red button. She's scary. The man named Konkuro thought as he stood next to Tamari. Hum. Where do I start? Oh well, we are currently in a place called, the Arena of Death, ever heard of it? Tamari asked the blonde. Naruto shook his head and Tamari continued, it's an arena under Magnolia where criminals come, to fight. Some criminals are sent to come and fight by Magnolia's council, and some come willingly, and well. Some people are just innocent who are kidnapped like you, and they are forced to fight. Naruto looked interested and Tamari continued once again, we normally don't give a shit who comes and dies, because a lot of these are hardcore criminals. However, lately dark guilds have been kidnapping innocent people, ladies, children, hardworking men, and forcing them to fight. Everyone dies. Nobody can defeat him. Him? Tamari stayed silent and Konkuro continued for her. Yes, our younger brother Gara. Konkuro and Tamari walked past Naruto and that was when Naruto noticed that behind him was a window. The blonde stood up and walked towards the window and his eyes widened when he saw a huge arena and seats, it was like a stadium but underground, there were criminals all over the place, and two people seemed to be fighting, a man with red hair, and an old man. T this is all under Magnolia? Naruto asked, he was honestly surprised. Yes. Tamari and Konkuro nodded. H how the fuck is this here? People would have tried to shut this down. Do you know why we came to you Naruto Uzumaki? Tamari asked him. Because I'm hot, young, and cheap when it comes to doing jobs. Tamari shook her head, no, you failed your first odd jobs, so I highly doubt you were reliable. We picked you because, legal guilds can't help, they are free but Magnolia's magic council places some laws upon them, and one of those laws is that they cannot interfere with this underground arena. The council, dark guilds, and rich and wealthy people all invest money in this arena, and the fights. People have tried getting this place locked up in the past, but everyone fails, this place is protected by the council, dark guilds, and wealthy people. Those people disappear. What? You're trying to get me to shut this place down knowing I could die? No, idiot. 
We want you to stop that man. Tamari yelled as both looked at the fight going on in the arena. Please. Please don't kill me. I have a wife and three children. They can't live without me. Have a heart. Naruto saw that the old man fighting Gara was on the floor. His right leg was torn off and he couldn't walk. Gara was smirking evilly and he spoke, You. Will. Prove. My existence, Cuckoo. Naruto saw as sand began to cover the man until he was completely covered in it. The blonde's eyes then widened when Gara yelled, Sand binding coffin. The sand tightened around the man and then pieces of flesh were all over the floor, it was a bloody mess, and anyone could puke at the sight, but that wasn't the most shocking thing. The most shocking thing was that Gara was smiling. His looked like a fucking maniac. That dude needs a therapist. Naruto just stated as he looked at Tamari who looked to be shaking up. We want you to stop him, Konkuro told the blonde. Uh, I don't want to die, no thanks. Naruto stated he looked at Konkuro lazily. You don't have a choice, if you don't do this, I'll kill you. Tamari growled as she pressed the red button on her remote control. Oi. What was the point of telling me shit if I don't have a choice? You should have just dropped me in the arena. W we didn't want to start on the wrong foot. Wrong foot? The moment you kidnapped me, we started on the wrong foot, should have just kept at it. We heard you don't listen to anyone. Why you were our only choice, I just want Gara to stop. I love Gara. he scares me. But I don't want him to be like that. If you defeat him, they will replace him. And that's fine with me, I just want Gara to change. Tamari yelled and she was crying. Naruto was about to speak but stopped when he heard a speaker down in the area yell through a speaker. Now we have Zabuza. The dragon slayer getting ready to fight Gara the god slayer. Last time Zabuza came with his bitch Haku, and that little bitch ended up dying. And now Zabuza comes back for revenge. Who will win? Who will lose? Will Zabuza get his revenge or will Gara the undefeated still be king of this arena? WHO is the superior dragon OR god? Place your bets now people. W what the fuck? Naruto thought as he looked at Zabuza standing in front of Gara. I keep bumping up with this fucker. So that's why he wouldn't tell me what happened to Haku. At the count of three you may begin. One, two, three. The speaker yelled and Zabuza charged at Gara. Naruto looked down on the fight and noticed that Zabuza wasn't using magic, instead, he had a bag and he pulled out an explosive lacrima. He threw it at Gara as he charged, and it exploded. The blonde then saw as sand quickly formed around Gara and saved him from the explosion. The sand then headed towards Zabuza and it pushed him back, causing him to fly backward. Naruto's eyes then widened, when he saw that Gara was going to use the same move he used on the guy before Zabuza. Well, he's dead, Konkuro stated as he turned around, he could never get used to that move. Hey, where is Naruto? Hey, that bastard ran away. T that idiot, Tamari said and Konkuro turned around and his eyes widened when he saw Naruto on the arena. Gara was about to kill Zabuza when he heard someone shout, Fire Dragon's Roar. Gara's eyes widened when he saw a blonde-haired man not far away. Where had he come from? Quickly, the sand that was once wrapped around Zabuza quickly made its way over to Gara. Kaboom. Gara flew backwards as his sand protected him, but it didn't protect him enough. Naruto, who had appeared out of nowhere, was on the floor as the collar on his neck was shocking him with a high voltage of electricity. W what? The fuck is this shit? Naruto growled as tried getting up, when I used my magic. Fuck. Tamari and Konkuro all of a sudden appeared beside Naruto. Konkuro quickly lifted him up and Tamari looked surprised at Naruto and at Gara. That collar is designed to kill you if you use magic. Yet he's not dead. Nobody has ever landed a hit on Gara. What is he? Tamari thought as she looked at Naruto. What is the meaning of this? Gara yelled angrily as he stood up. Tamari and Konkuro froze. If they told Gara they had gotten Naruto to stop him, he'd kill them all right there and then. However, their eyes widened when Naruto pointed at Zabuza and spoke, when I saw Freak with no eyebrows partying without me, I couldn't help but join, how about it? Can I join the party, redhead? Gara stared at Naruto, and he was surprised. Everyone that had ever fought him, had fear in their eyes, he could see it, he could smell it, he could taste it. But Naruto his eyes were lifeless, and it pissed Gara off. Gara was about to attack but instead, he turned around and started walking away. Oi, running to your mommy? Naruto smirked, did I scare you? Oi, you pissed your pants, didn't you? Shut up. Tamari and Konkuro punched Naruto's face, while Gara turned around. Your body is shaking, the shock from that collar. It weakened you, I can kill you instantly right now. Cuckoo, I look forward to fighting you tomorrow. Tomorrow I will kill you. You will prove my existence. Yeah? And tomorrow I'll take you to a therapist once I defeat you. Gara ignored him and continued walking away, while the crowd of criminals started booing and throwing food. 
Boo. You killed our entertainment for today. Kill him with fire. Naruto calmly walked towards the guy with the microphone, and he snatched it from the man. Yo bitches, I am Naruto Uzumaki, and I'm gonna be the next king of this arena. If any of you fuckers have a problem with me crashing your little entertainment, have at me while I have a handicap, it'll be your only chance of ever getting at me, cuckoo. It stayed silent, everyone had heard of Naruto Uzumaki, and none wanted to mess with him. Muahaha. That's right bitches, stay silent and shit your pants in fear. Naruto Uzumaki is out of here, bitches. Naruto dropped the mic and started walking away while Tamari, Konkuro, and Zabuza all thought the same thing, he's either a dumbass or brave. Either way, he's gonna get us killed. Chapter 19. Pissed. You are such an idiot. Konkuro pointed at Naruto as he sighed, Gara is going to kill you now. Ha. Bitch can try. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Naruto had gone back to the room which he was originally in before he interfered with Zabuza's and Gara's fight. Zabuza was looking at Naruto and Naruto either didn't seem to notice, or he just was ignoring Zabuza. Tamari and Konkuro were worried as she chatted among themselves. Oi. Why didn't you use magic, no eyebrows? Naruto questioned Zabuza, he was curious. Zabuza pointed at his neck, he had a collar like Naruto, this shit, you need to wear this shit if you want to fight in the arena. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention that when you fight Gara, you will have to wear it, it's part of the rules. Tamari told the blonde. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Uh, I forgot, haha. <laughs> Tamari laughed nervously. I am going to die, aren't I? Naruto said before he sighed and started walking away. W where are you going? Zabuza, Tamari, and Konkuro yelled at the blonde. I'm going to go eat as much ramen and read as much manga as I can before I die. Was Naruto's only reply as he walked away. Makarov the master of fairy tale was at a local bar drinking and well eavesdropping. You see bars always had dark guild members who'd come and talk about their latest goals, and future plans, overall it was a place to gather information on different shit. The old man was giggling perversely as he listened to the conversation between two young chicks. Hmm, does this dress make my butt look big? No, it doesn't. I should have wearing panties. Nah, I feel sexier without panties. Oh, you're such a naughty girl you need to be punished. Makarov was blushing like crazy when a certain conversation was brought to his attention. D didn't you hear? Naruto Uzumaki is gonna fight Gara at the arena of death. I am so excited. Me too. This is going to be so awesome. I bet all my money Gara is going to win. I think Naruto will win. He's strong, I've heard. Gara is a god, he won't lose, even that man doesn't stand a chance. Makarov looked worried when he heard this. That boy, what the hell is he thinking? If Natsu finds out about this, oh damn, I need to prevent Natsu from finding out. He acts like he hates Naruto. But if that boy finds out Naruto's life is in danger, he'll go. Dot the old man thought as he kept listening. Everyone is going to be there. Council members, powerful dark guilds, and all the rich dudes, really want to see Naruto fight. What's the big deal? He's just a blonde-haired asshole. Ha. Huh. Did he kick your ass? Why so salty? Shut up. I hate him. Makarov got up and decided to walk away, but as he walked away he thought, I'm going to go watch this match even though that Gara kid will win. The old man sighed. The next day, Naruto was getting ready for his match. Well not really he was reading manga, he was in the same room from yesterday, and it seemed Gara was down at the arena waiting for him to get there. As the blonde read his precious manga, Tamari and Konkuro walked into the room. Naruto. Tamari sighed as she looked at him, you don't have to fight if you don't want. Naruto cocked an eyebrow, oi, why the change of heart? Don't tell me you fell in love with me, and you don't want to see me die? Who'd fall for a dumbass of a man? Tamari snapped at Naruto before she got serious, in these matches. The only way to win is if you kill the other person. Which means, if you don't kill Gara, you won't win. So in the end all of these criminals will kill both you and Gara if one of you doesn't die. Naruto remained silent before he spoke. Yeah, yeah, blah blah, I'll win, so you better be ready to throw your panties at King Naruto Uzumaki. Tamari stepped back in fear as she looked at Naruto's blue eyes. Those eyes. Is he going to kill Gara? And no, I, I don't want Gara to die. Tamari thought as she watched Naruto walk away. As Naruto walked, he noticed that Konkuro was following him until they stood side to side. Naruto, Gara wasn't always like this. Oi, don't give me this sad crap. You were just about to reveal Gara's past, weren't you? About how he ended up into a bloodlusting killer, right? Naruto interrupted Konkuro, and he continued, I got news for you, I don't care, alright? Save that past story kind of shit for another fanfiction story. Why you asshole, what kind of main character are you? 
Konkuro growled at Naruto. Naruto smirked evilly and spoke, the kind that reads manga and loves ice cream. Konkuro sighed as he stopped walking. Naruto just kept walking. When Naruto arrived at the arena he was surprised when he saw Zabuza there. What the hell was he doing there? Oi. What are you doing here? Cuckoo, idiot, I came for revenge, you know that. Well leave. I don't want to be remembered as the guy who died next to you. Fuck you, brat. Zabuza growled as he flipped off Naruto. I don't plan on dying. Oi. Same here, so don't get in my way, and if you die, die alone and in your corner, and make sure your body isn't found, I don't have time to go to a funeral. Zabuza laughed at this and spoke, I wouldn't have it any other way, brat. Both dragon slayers stood in the arena across from them was Gara who was smirking evilly. I will enjoy killing both of you, cuckoo. Gara spoke, you will prove my existence. Ladies and gentlemen, today it seems we have many people to witness this extraordinary match. Dragon slayers versus a god slayer. Who will win this fight? A match to the death between the king Gara and two dragons, will Gara remain king? Or will rookie Naruto Uzumaki snatch the crown? Place your bets now, and may the match begin. The speaker quickly got out of the arena as Gara's sand quickly headed towards Naruto and Zabuza. The sand got close to them at a fast rate. Zabuza jumped back and slashed at the sand with his huge blade. While Naruto remained where he was, the sand slowly surrounded his body, and then the blonde disappeared. W where is he? Gara's eyes widened, and before he knew it Naruto was in front of him. The blonde swung his fist and punched Gara right in the jaw. The redhead flew back as his sand came rushing back at him. The blonde quickly jumped back and watched as Gara landed on the floor, or well crashed on the floor. Oh shit, did you see that? He's fast. Whoa, I didn't even see him. M maybe he has a chance at winning. The criminals in the crowd spoke among themselves as Gara stood up and looked at Naruto and Zabuza who were standing side to side. Zabuza looked irritated while Naruto just looked bored. He was even picking his ear with his pinky while he yawned and this pissed off Gara. That look of his. I hate it. Gara thought as he growled. I'll kill him. Sand God's desert wave. Gara yelled as a huge wall of sand formed in front of him, and like a wave of water it headed towards Naruto and Zabuza. Naruto gulped as the giant wave of sand almost crashed into them. The blonde quickly jumped as he grabbed Zabuza by his collar. The sand impacted with the arena floor and the blonde landed on Zabuza's back as the water dragon slayer landed face first on the sand. Naruto grinned as he surfed through the sand with Zabuza. Yes the older man was his human surfboard. I'm not a surfboard, get off brat. Zabuza yelled at Naruto as Naruto stood on his back. Shut up, and eat sand. Naruto just snapped as he stepped on Zabuza's head, and now the older man was eating sand. The blonde quickly surfed through the sand as the sand from the ground popped from the sand he was surfing in, and it headed towards him. With Zabuza's blade the blonde slashed at any incoming sand, and as he got closer to Gara, he jumped into the air and headed right towards Gara. Zabuza's blade in his hand. Sand God's shield of sand. Gara yelled as Naruto got closer to him, and as the blonde swung and almost pierced Gara's face, a sphere of sand surrounded Gara. The blonde felt as Zabuza's blade entered the strong and thick sand. The blonde growled as he tried getting the blade out but couldn't. Sand God's bellow. Naruto then heard as out of Gara's shield of sand came out a beam of sand. Naruto flew across the arena as the beam of sand hit him full force. If it wasn't for the arena's wall he could have kept going. He crashed into the wall and created a crater on it, and he fell to the floor. Shit. That was one hell of an attack. As the blonde finally got up he looked at Gara and noticed that blood was oozing out of Gara's right shoulder. The blonde blinked and realized he had hurt Gara with Zabuza's blade. Gara looked surprised at the blood before he growled. Sand God's monstrous sand arm. And from all the sand on the entire arena a huge sand and monster looking arm formed. Naruto's eyes widened as he saw it. The monstrous sand arm headed towards the blonde, and he was about to dodge when he realized Gara's sand was holding onto his feet. He growled as he tried jumping but the sand held him down. Cuckoo this is the end of you Naruto Uzumaki. Gara laughed evilly as the huge arm made of sand made its way toward the blonde. And then. Zabuza appeared in front of Naruto and the blonde's eyes widened as the huge arm of sand grabbed the older man instead. Naruto felt as if time had slowed down for him as he saw the huge hand of sand close tightly around Zabuza's body. The blonde then heard cracks, and bones breaking as the huge arm threw Zabuza across the room. Zabuza. Naruto yelled in shock as he punched the sand that was holding onto his feet. His fists were getting bloody, and he growled when he couldn't do anything about the sand so he tried running and as he did he felt the muscles around his thighs, and entire legs tighten, he kept trying to get himself free until at last he broke free. He fell into the floor but quickly got up and ran towards Zabuza who was at the end of the arena. 
Kukuku, my loyal bitch. Naruto grinned as he looked at Zabuza, he was at last in front of Zabuza who was on the floor. My loyal bitch to the end. Zabuza looked at Naruto and said, you're not even sad, are you? I I won't show it. Naruto thought as he looked down at Zabuza, in the end, I'm just the most heartless man in Magnolia, Cuckoo. It's up to you. Now brat. Zabuza coughed blood and Naruto quickly turned around. I won't cry. I won't show emotion. Tell him he can go to hell. Naruto thought. You're annoying. Just die already, motherfucker. Naruto whispered as his bangs covered his eyes. I hope Gara kills you, asshole, in hell I'll torture you for eternity. Zabuza smirked as he closed his eyes. I can see through you, brat. Ha. Huh. Because I'm the same. But it's better like this, for prideful guys like us. Is he dead? No. I, I hear a heartbeat. Naruto thought as he remained silent. That was interesting. Gara said as he looked at Naruto. The blonde noticed that Gara's sand was starting to surround the blonde's body, the bond. You formed with that man. It's odd. Gara stated as Naruto felt his entire body minus his head covered in sand. He died to prove my existence, and you will die proving my existence, Cuckoo. Naruto bit his bottom lip. Gara was starting to piss him off. The blonde at last felt his entire head covered in Gara's sand. Well, this is the end. Ah, it was pretty good. I actually thought the blondie would win. Haha. <laughs> Kill, 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 kill him. Gara as the king. The crowd whispered and cheered while Gara's sand started tightening around the blonde's entire body. Sand coffin. Gara was about to finish off the blonde when black flames exploded out of the sand. The redhead's eyes widened when the black flames burned up his sand to reveal Naruto covered in black flames. The collar he once had on his neck was now on his right hand, burning up by the flames. Gara looked at Naruto's eyes and to his surprise they were no longer blue, they looked blood red now and he no longer had a lifeless expression on his eyes, nor a bored expression on his face. He had something else in those eyes. He had something very few people had ever seen on the blonde's face. The redhead saw anger. Seems you want to get to the hospital the quickest way possible, Cuckoo? Naruto laughed evilly as he charged at Gara. Chapter 20. Battle of Slayers. Gara looked at Naruto's eyes and to his surprise they were no longer blue, they looked blood red now, and he no longer had a lifeless expression on his eyes, nor a bored expression on his face. He had something else in those eyes. He had something very few people had ever seen on the blonde's face. The redhead saw anger. Seems you want to get to the hospital the quickest way possible, Cuckoo? Naruto laughed evilly as he charged at Gara. Gara froze when he heard these words, his body froze on its own. That one sentence had pure evil and killing intent behind it. The redhead flinched when Naruto appeared in front of him, both made eye contact, Gara saw the coldness of those eyes, colder than any winter, eyes that would show no remorse, pity, or even mercy. Yeah, he was fucked. Die bastard. Naruto yelled as he swung his right arm. Gara then flew backward as Naruto's fist kissed his lips. Crack. Gara felt his neck crack as the force and pressure of that punch that made him fly back, if it wasn't for the fact that he was a godslayer, he could have been hurt badly or worse dead. As the redhead was about to crash into the arena's wall, Naruto appeared to his side and kicked his left cheek causing the crazy red head to now fly sideways, as he flew he saw Zabuza's blade and he quickly grabbed it as he shifted his body midair and turned to see Naruto running towards him. Gara smirked as he swung Zabuza's gigantic blade. The blonde appeared in front of Gara to see the blade inches away from his face. Gara was going to slice his head in half. I win. Cuckoo, you will prove my, shut the fuck up. Naruto snapped angrily as he surprised Gara when he opened his mouth wide and bit down as hard as he could on Zabuza's blade. Crack. Zabuza's blade broke into pieces that flew all over the place, and the blonde grabbed a random piece and quickly shoved it down Gara's shoulder, blood squirted everywhere as Naruto smirked. Gara growled he wasn't going to lose now. He too, grabbed a piece of the broken blade and then he shoved it into Naruto's stomach, the blonde growled and quickly uppercut Gara, and the god slayer flew upwards to see Naruto already above him. Raging fire dragons roar. Naruto yelled as a huge beam of black fire headed toward Gara. Sand God's shield. Gara yelled quickly as a shield of sand wrapped itself around the God Slayer. Kaboom. Gara growled as the blazing beam of fire burst through his sand shield. It hit him and he crashed down on the arena ground, feeling as if a bullet train had just hit him. A crater had formed around him and he lay in the middle as Naruto now crashed down on him. More blood squirted out of the redhead as Naruto's wooden blade pierced his other shoulder. The blonde was now smirking evilly over Gara. Gara was about to speak when Naruto spat blood on his face. Gara felt the hot liquid roll down his forehead and down his left cheek. 
This angered Gara gravely. Sand God's arm of death. Gara yelled and Naruto quickly jumped back as Gara's entire right arm grew enormously. You will die now. Gara yelled as his huge sand arm headed right toward the blonde. Naruto quickly jumped in the air and swung his wooden blade as Gara's huge hand extended and followed him. It didn't work. His wooden blade got stuck on the redhead's hand and Gara quickly grabbed the blonde and threw him across the arena. The blonde slid and rolled across the arena as he crashed on the arena wall. He didn't have enough time to recover as Gara was already in front of him. The God Slayer swung his fist and punched the blonde's entire body. Crack. Naruto felt every bone in his body crack as Gara punched him repeatedly. He didn't give the blonde time to breathe or time to escape. Die. Gara yelled at last as he punched the blonde once more with everything he had. He saw as Naruto looked down at the floor, his entire face was bloody. His eyes then widened when Naruto looked up and stared at him. The blonde smirked evilly and spoke, Is that all? Impossible. Gara yelled as he swung his enlarged sand arm at the blonde once more. Naruto lifted his entire left arm and stopped the attack with just his palm. Gara's eyes widened, and his stuttered, W what or why you? Naruto ignored him and quickly re-quipped a katana that appeared on his right hand. He quickly slashed at Gara's sand hand and sliced off half of it. It fell to the floor and Naruto yelled, Fire dragons. The blonde was interrupted when Gara quickly yelled, Sand God's tornado. A beam of sand hit the blonde, and a sand tornado formed around him. In a matter of seconds the blonde was inside a sand tornado. He felt the sand scrape his flesh, and he felt his entire being pulled by the pressure of being inside a sand tornado as he swirled around it. S shit, I gotta do something quick. I feel like I'm going to puke. The blonde thought as he kept spinning and spinning, his flames were somehow dying out on him and he couldn't use magic. Gara watched as the blonde's flames died down, and he smirked. There was no way he'd survive that. Why? Because those who got trapped inside the tornado, their magic would get sucked in by the sand, and that's what caused the tornado to get bigger and bigger. But to his surprise the sand tornado started getting smaller and smaller, what the hell was going on? Cuckoo, I don't know what the fuck this is, but I'm liking it. Naruto smirked as Gara watched him suck in the last bit of sand tornado. Oh crap he had eaten the sand. Why you, a dragon s slayer can't eat godly material. Gara snapped at Naruto. I'm not a fucking dragon slayer. Nor am I a god, I'm not a mage either, I'm Naruto Uzumaki before anything else, so suck it bitch. Naruto smirked and Gara's eyes just widened. Covering Naruto's entire body was a thin shield of sand, and over the sand there were black flames. Overall if one were to look at the blonde for the first time in their life, they'd think he was a demon. Fighting won't bring your friend back. I will win in the end and just like him, you'll prove my existence, cuckoo. Gara just laughed. HMPH, stop babbling, sand freak, that fucker Zabuza isn't dead, didn't you hear him? He doesn't plan on dying here, and neither do I. Naruto growled and Gara's just growled, this blonde was pissing him off. Muahaha you are amusing Uzumaki. You had a chance at beating me. But now you have brought me to use my ultimate form. Your chance is now at 0%, you will feel despair, and you'll die like everyone before you. Gara just laughed evilly as he started changing. Naruto just watched as Gara yelled, Sand God's transformation. The redhead's entire body was now covered in sand as he grew bigger and bigger until he was the size of a dragon, he looked like a fucking raccoon, his eyes just looked odd, and he had a huge freaking tail now, his arms and legs were enlarged and oddly looking. You son of a mutant bitch. Naruto just blinked as he stared at Gara. Muahaha die. Gara laughed like a maniac as he swung his tail at the blonde. Naruto jumped back and barely dodged the hit, but he flew back regardless as the swing of his tail created high wind pressure. Fire dragon's sand roar. Naruto just yelled as he flew backward. A beam of sand wrapped around fire headed towards Gara's stomach, and nothing happened. Mauaha your attack is useless on me now, Kukuku. Gara laughed and Naruto's eyes widened. Sand God's bellow. Gara just yelled after. Naruto's eyes widened as a gigantic beam of sand headed towards him. The beam was so huge that it covered the entire arena, so he couldn't move to the side, and he couldn't jump either. If he jumped and managed to dodge the attack, that would leave him open to more attacks from Gara. Fire Dragon's fire sand shield. Naruto just yelled as a magic circle appeared in front of him, and then a huge wall of thick sand appeared in front of him. The wall was covered in black flames, and Gara's beam of sand hit the wall and it was starting to crack. The now enlarged Gara kept pouring magic into his attack and the shield wall of sand wouldn't last any longer. Cuckoo, you got lucky this time. Gara just laughed evilly as the attack ended, but can it get lucky against my next attack? K-U-K-U-K-U-K-U, -K -U -K -U -K -U, Sand God's Bomb. 
Naruto flew backward as a huge bomb of sand came out of Gara's mouth, it hit his fire sand shield and broke through it, the blonde growled as he shifted his body and did a back flip, he landed on the ground standing up and facing Gara, but not for long as Gara yelled, sand gods floating bombs. Ten huge sand balls formed, above the blonde and he gulped as they came crashing down on him, at a quick speed. Kaboom. Two landed on his left and right and they exploded, the explosions were huge which caused him to fly upward, and as he flew upwards three sand bombs hit his body. Boom. Naruto crashed down on the floor as the remaining sand bombs came crashing down on him. Kaboom. Dust and smoke covered the arena as people watched without blinking. This was a match no one wanted to miss not even one scene. S shit. Gara as the king. The blondie is dead. Those bombs were packing. I gotta hand it to the kid. He is the only one to have lasted this long against Gara. The people stopped talking as the smoke and dust started to clear. And just like many predicted the blonde was on the floor. Gara was smirking like he just had won the lottery. However, his smirk faded away as Naruto slowly got up. And as he stood up the blonde fell back to the floor but he tried it again and this time he stood up straight, blood dripping on the side of his head and face. Ha. I hardly felt a thing. Naruto laughed as Gara growled. The crowd's eyes widened. Just die already. Gara snapped with rage, stay down. Ha. Naruto laughed which caused Gara to look at him oddly, I wish I could. But my body, it's moving on its own. I'd rather be reading manga. Fuck. Muaha I'll make sure you don't get up then, cuckoo. Gara spoke as Naruto once again felt sand wrap around his body. Gara was going to do sand binding coffin it seemed. Any last words, Uzumaki? Cuckoo, you won't get out of this one. You have little to no magic left, ha ha ha. Gara smirked as he closed his right hand slowly and the sand around Naruto slowly tightened around his body, and almost completely covered his face. Yeah. I'm warning you. I'm a screamer. Ah, Naruto began screaming. This is just so sad to watch. Someone from the crowd spoke. Sand binding cough, Gara then yelled but once again was interrupted from using this attack on the blonde, when Naruto's screams started getting louder and deeper, it wasn't even a scream anymore, it was something else, something many humans hadn't heard before. Roer rrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
everyone in the arena yelled pretty much yelled as Naruto now stood in front of Gara. The redhead was prepared to die, but to his surprise, Naruto took out a manga book threw it at Gara's chest, and fell to the floor on his face. Quote dot 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 quote. Silence. What the fuck? Is it over? Fuck this. I came here to watch a bitch die. Me too. Kill both of them, they are weak now. We can take on Gara and Uzumaki. The criminals in the crowd all snapped and yelled angrily as Konkuro and Tamari appeared in front of Gara and Naruto. Konkuro was holding on to Zabuza who eyed Naruto. Both siblings growled as the five of them were surrounded. Fuck. How are we going to get out of here, Tem? Konkuro asked his sister. How the hell should I know? Hee <laughs> hee. You little shits think you can take me? Naruto just laughed as he stood up. He re-quipped two sharp katanas into both his hands and stared at the people surrounding them. I don't mind dying here, but I don't plan on dying alone. I'll take all of you fuckers to hell with me, cuckoo. Oh shit, he's up. H he can still fight? H he's a monster. Ah, uh, I think I hear my mother calling me. Yeah, my wife is going to give birth today, so I gotta go. You don't have a wife. Ah, uh, bye. Every criminal within sight dashed away leaving the five alone. Tamari and Konkuro eyed the blonde. He really was a fearsome man. The blonde then did something that surprised them all. Fire dragon sand roar. The blonde yelled as his beam of sand and fire hit the ceiling above them. W what are you doing? Destroying this place, I hate those council members. Naruto grinned as the ceiling above them began crashing down on them. The blonde then began walking but suddenly saw darkness and fell to the floor. Scene change. A few days later, Gara still hasn't woken up, huh? Tamari asked Konkuro as both stood inside an elevator. They were at Magnolia Hospital, and they were going to go visit Gara. Yeah. He did wake up once though. The look in his eyes, it changed. I don't know what he saw when he fought that man. But I'll tell you one thing. That man is not a man you want to fuck with. Yeah. Tamari said as she looked at the floor, I feel bad for dragging him into our problems. Konkuro just nodded and they remained silent as the elevator went up. At last, it stopped and when the doors opened they were surprised at the sight in front of them. Haha. <laughs> Suckers. I'll win this. Naruto laughed as he was racing Gara and Zabuza on wheelchairs in the hospital halls. Brat, you're still 9,000 years too early to beat me. Zabuza yelled as he passed the blonde. Cuckoo, both of you will lose and it'll prove my existence. Gara laughed as he passed both of them in his wheelchair. Gara, Naruto, Zabuza, what have we told you men about having wheelchair races in the hall? The nurse snapped at them. You're still hurt, all of you. Get back to your rooms. Yeah, yeah mother. Naruto said as he shrugged his shoulders, Gara I'm hungry, I bet I can eat more ramen than you. Bring it on, Uzumaki. I won't lose to you ever. Let's go then. Naruto grinned and Gara smiled as he followed the blonde. The nurse's sighed as one muttered, these mages are too much. W what is this? Konkuro said shocked. D did Gara just smile? Tamari asked shocked. T they were trying to kill each other and now it's like they are best friends. Ha. Zabuza laughed as he caught their attention, that's the type of shitty man he is. He's a lazy, rotten, selfish man that pretty much only thinks about himself. He'd rather sit back and read those damn manga than fight. He just wants to live peacefully, but somehow, he manages to attract people around him. I don't know what is it, but it just happens. Zabuza finished as he started rolling away in his wheelchair. Tamari and Konkuro stayed silent, processing what they just heard. Huh? It must have been nice being Naruto Uzumaki. They thought. Okay sadly chapter is over and if you enjoyed just leave a like and subscribe with a post notification so when the chapter is ready you will be notified okay see you next one bye.